What's up, Lovies? Welcome back to another Not So Daily video. Right, I'm not listening to B.I. I was jamming. This one is a crazy rotten mango video. This was suggested by Cindy B. Again, you won. Um, Thank you, Cindy B. Thank uh, you. I was gonna say it's gonna be split up into two parts here on Patreon because it is an hour and fifty uh, hours. I'm saying an hour and fifty hours long. <laughs> uh, an hour and fifty minutes long. So we're, the next one's gonna be posted, I think. Thursday. David, could you double check that for me? But what else are we gonna be watching? We're also gonna be watching another Rotten Mango video after this. So guys, stay tuned for that. It is 33 crew members when deep sea squid hunting turned mad and started hunting wow. each other. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Guys, by the like, way, these mango we hmm. check out the videos you guys want us to check out. All you gotta do is go on Patreon or Patreon already. Thank you. Go on the Ruby tier, suggest Love the you, video, Rubies. people vote, and then we watch videos like this, which actually this video it's something that, that that's like super interesting to us because it's a lot of stuff that we kind of know what happened, but now we're about to get two hours of in-depth discussion and yep. detail of what's gonna happen. By the way, part two is gonna be uploaded next Wednesday. Next Wednesday? Guys, stay tuned for next Wednesday. That part two will be up. And then here on YouTube, it's gonna be the whole hour, but Patreons got the whole Mamba Jumbo. Probably like a month or two earlier. So if you wanna support, thank you if you do. Love y'all. Yes. Like, you know, support us. Love you. But the sun, the burning sun scandal. That's what it is. The burning <laughs> sun scandal. What happened? Who was involved? We know people went to jail. A lot of crazy stuff happened because we also -pop know like stars, Kev. Like K-pop stars. We we followed K-pop for the longest time. We knew a lot of the stuff going on, but we didn't know the details, like David said. Mm -hmm. So to this day, we still don't know everything because it was just so much that had come out that it was hard to keep up with. So the fact that now we get like this, you know, jam packed into this hour and fifty, now we get to know thanks to Rotten Mango. So make That's sure you guys right. Know yes. Like, I, I can't wait to know what happened. What Let's find hell? out. How the hell does this? Like, it, it mind boggles me, because even, because I don't know, I don't want to say names or anything, because I don't know the involvement or anything like that, but then some people that had come out that were involved were like, what the fuck? Dude, it is you know? fucking insane, because like, it's a stars you just never that, that you would think that have no need at all to do yeah. anything like this. Like, you are one of the biggest stars in the world right now, what the fudge is going on? We're gonna find like for out. More money, like we are for gonna more get power behind the pissed scenes. Pissed off is... and upset as always. Our intros are always a little bit weird because we we start all kind of happy and peppy, and at the end we're just angry, hating the world, hating everyone in it, feeling so bad for the victims. By the way, let's see what let's goes go. down, man. So bro, what's good, bro? Have you heard the news? What news? Oh, so you happy? Come on, what's the news? Oh, only that Clue Box now has 17 K-pop boots to choose your very own K-pop box from. What? Wait, what the K-pop box? Well, if you must ask, it's a K-pop box full of mystery K-pop merch based on the group of your choice, delivered straight to your front door. You're telling me I can now support and embrace my K-pop biases and take daddy straight from my home? Especially K-pop dance. Ooh, now you got me hooked. There can't be more at Clue Box. Duh, stuff is up, right? <laughs> Since you asked, Clue Box keeps you in for a surprise. You can get items ranging from photo cards, keychains, stationery, accessories, bottles of apparel, skincare, ramen. Okay, stop, stop. You said enough. I'm getting me a K-pop and Clue Box as well as my friends right now. Am I one of those friends? Only oh, you tell me that I've sent discount code, baby. Bless you. Use NSD5 off 5% off your order. Now, on to the face of video. In 2016, in South Korea, a woman walks into the police station to report that her ex-boyfriend had taken explicit photos of her without her consent. She wants to file a formal police report. The ex-boyfriend then gets called into the police station where he says he's more than willing to do anything that he possibly can to show that he is innocent of what he is being accused of. But the problem is it's broken. The police are like, what do you mean it's broken? His phone was conveniently broken. But the police, they're thinking, we can't just tuck away the case and call it a good day. We're going to have the man send his phone in to a data forensics company, the same one that recovered all the data from this Hewar Ferry victim's phones, and oh. have an IT specialist look at it to see if they can recover any data. So an IT okay. specialist takes it in, and for his privacy, we will refer to him as Park. Park gets assigned this man's phone, and he's trying to work on recovering any and all the data from the device, and he's really good at his job. He recovers almost everything. Over 200,000 text messages, group yeah. chats. 200,000 text go, messages. You go, Park. Yeah. 200,000 individual text messages. 
Wow, okay. Videos, photos, mm. I mean, anything that could be recovered, he's recovered it. But suddenly, the police call the IT guy and tells him, we don't need your services anymore. Huh? I mean, you can just stop what you're doing and give the phone back to the man who brought it. I was about to be like, yes, yes, we're starting off with a good police story right here. Yeah, Never. why? What? Mm, mm. They explain the very briefly. The girlfriend has since dropped the criminal case. Oh. She's retracted her statements and said that she lashed out at her ex out of anger and that there were no photos. So the investigation is over. Wait, so did the police look at the text message? No, they didn't look at anything. They like just turn it in. We don't even want to look at it. We don't even want to bother ourselves with this. Mm. But for the tech employee, Park, it felt like the investigation was just getting started. While he had been retrieving all the lost data from the man's phone, he couldn't help but peek, you know? I mean, could you really call it peeking? He has to verify that the data is being recovered, and how can you do that without even glancing at said data? And what he saw were images of women, unconscious, naked, oh, videos my of God. unconscious women being essayed, women being drugged and abused. In group chats, there were prices under these women. The cost what of how the... much it would be to essay them yourself. What the Menus, fuck? literal catalogs of women for sale. Messages what that depicted fuck? people discussing the, quote, sale of these women. They would read like, number one doesn't talk that much and kind of loves money. What she also has fuck? aspects where she doesn't have much charisma in drinking scenes, but her visuals are great. Number three... Good visuals, she's bright, she's fun while drinking, but the negative aspect is she gets a little messy when she's drunk. But still, a lot of charisma. The receiving end texts back. Oh, then sure. let's go with number five the... along with number three. What do you do as soon as you find that information? And then the cops say, you're like, oh, you go to like a different, the federal police? Oh, what do you? What the hell, dude? So casually, too. Like, this is the phone of the K-pop star, right? Like, that is this K-pop star's phone. No, no, I think this was just... Something um, else. Is, okay. Yeah, I think so. I don't think... Okay, okay. They, I don't think they said K-pop star. Okay, 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 okay. Still, though, what Girls the fuck? Girls were just being sold yeah. to the highest bidder. Me Why did the girlfriend also, re like, did, did they, like, threaten her or something? I'm pretty sure they did. People sharing videos of unconscious women. Did they threaten the police as well? Essayed. The receiving parties of these messages, they reacted to the videos as if they were watching a funny TikTok. Something entertaining, not a literal crime. They would text things like, I fed her sleeping pills and assaulted her in the back, then in the front, then in the back again, and then I finished. What the fuck? People were responding, ha 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 ha. What the Redacted, fuck? Insert person's name. Ate him. Some other people commented, the mouth on her is great. Another Ooh. chat log showed a picture of a sleeping woman, and the friends responded, who is it? Her body is so freaking good. Another chat included a video of an unconscious woman being essayed with the text, who wants to watch explicit videos tonight? The friends responded, what's this? Is she unconscious? The sender responds, and if she is... Send a video with an alive girl. It's because she's unconscious I can take these high quality videos with Flash. Someone else in the group chat responds, You her, he he. In another text they write, she doesn't even remember who she did it with, implying that the drugs they fed the victim altered her memory. But someone else responds into the chat, No, she's just an R word. As Park is reading some of these messages and glimpsing at some of these pictures, he is realizing that there are literal crimes being committed in these group chats. Women oh, yeah? are being drugged and essayed. He needs to alert the authorities about it. This feels like a shady crime syndicate out there running some sort of brothel out of their basement. He this opens trafficker. the group chat in full to see what other crimes they had committed, and he was shocked to see that he recognized mm. every single contact name in oh, there. Wow. The phone belonged to a famous Korean idol oh, by yeah. the name of Chung Chun Young, or JJY. He was the lead of a band called JJY Band. Another idol from FT Island named Choi Jung Hoon. Oh, Lee so Jung he was it, but she just hadn't said it yet, so that was. From what group? We've heard JJ of that White group. Band. No, then there's FT Island. I think it was the second group that, that was oh, yeah, JJY. He was the lead of a band called JJY Band. What the fuck? Another idol from FT Island named Choi Jung Hoon. Yeah. We know FT Island. Lee Jung Hyun, 
lead vocalist and guitarist of CN Blue, and the biggest name of all was Easing Lee yep. from the global yep. group Big Bang. Yep. And these messages, they revealed a complex trafficking ring operated by some of the biggest names in the Korean entertainment industry. The chat logs were between some of the most well-known, beloved celebrities in the industry. The wholesome kind of idols. Like the ones that girls would look at and show their boyfriends and say, he would never do this. In another group chat, the idols joke about how five of them gang essayed a drugged woman the night before a fan sign event. There was another shocking video of a woman being dragged out of a club owned by Lee Sung Lee by her hair by a man who is about to do God knows what to her. And she's trying to desperately get the club employee's attention by smacking down their laptop screens as she's getting dragged out by her hair. Employees don't even look. They act like nothing is happening. So the video is spread through mafia. the group chat. And so was another one. Well, it's a text message. And this is the reason why mm. the employee of the data forensic company could never go to the police with these messages. A text read, I saw the messages between the young and the police chief. They found out who snitched. Even high up police commissioners were exposed to be VIP clients of this trafficking ring. Park had just uncovered a trafficking ring run by celebrities, police officials, and there was nobody that could help him. There was nobody that could save the victims because everyone at the top was dirty. What the, the actual fuck? Dude, like when when before we got any context when when she was just describing the the the, the, the messages in there I'm like dude what kind of sick gross perverted people are doing this and then you see it's K-pop stars and high ups high people in power in the police force what the fudge like how do you not feel like gross said. even being part of that group like don't you see that's wrong like you're not a human being what, you know what I mean? The no, fuck? the fact that she said that um damn I'm blanking out. Ah No when you remember when you remember that. when you remember just, okay, just okay. come back. Cause you know also here we wanna the way we express ourselves, we wanna express as clearly oh, I got it. as I possible got it. the way you guys understand what we're trying to say and there's no miscommunication or anything as well. Like she said, like it's even people that you wouldn't even expect that you don't even see in that light. And Dude. it's just is so disgusting to do that to what the fuck just the, you don't really know these people you know you you put them up to this they had a fan just, signing it's event it's not even a standard the it's just day. being a human being it's like you wouldn't even expect it from like, like wholesome like the word wholesome like what why oh, do this 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 is but park would see can't comprehend of every yeah. single text message and three years later, it would be released onto the internet, exposing one of the most shocking Korean cases three years. to date, the Burning Sun case. Yep. Like when it came to, his, I forget his name, well, how she said the name, but Sungri. Like a lot of people still defend him, saying that he yes. wasn't actually a part of it or something along those lines. <clears throat> or like, oh, they're trying to frame it on him, but wasn't he the club owner? Right, dude. Me. If you're but the club know, owner, like some people couldn't take... let go of that delusion of <clears throat> the fact that, like, oh, the Magne from Big Bang was involved in all of this. Like, like let it go. Like, it's he's it, uh, a disgusting human being. From what I mean, we've known so far. I don't know what else is gonna come out, but sponsors who have made it possible for Rotten Mango to support the Joyful Heart Foundation well, we heard that. whose it mission was... is to transform society's response to assault, like did, domestic uh... violence, child abuse, and they really aim to <sighs> support survivors through their healing and reclaiming of their lives through things like education, advocacy, and policy change. This episode's partnerships have also made it possible to support Rotten Mango's growing team of dedicated researchers and translators. Wow. I mean, they really put their all into these cases. <laughs> they focus on shedding light on stories from all over the world. And we would also like to thank you guys for your continued support as we work on our mission to be worthy advocates for these causes. Mm. And as always, full show notes are available at rottenmangopodcast.com. Now, Burning Sun 
is a case that we're re revisiting from long, long ago because it's resurfacing in the news. There was a recent scandal that we'll get into. Whoa. And additionally, because I feel like our quality of research has drastically improved. So truly, this is going to be a deep, deep dive onto the horrors of this case. Wow. Because it's a lot. We had multiple translators, researchers help assist with this one. There was one RM meeting where we had like seven people in three different time zones. Wow. Just on a call for hours trying to get through everything again. We're like going through it three times, four times just to make sure everything is good. You gotta but come as always, Ramega. if there's anything we've missed or Thank anything so that was lost in translation or wasn't properly clarified, please let us know in the comments. Wow. And with that being said, let's get started. This case took place in Korea around 2018, but it's back in the news cycle for a lot of K-netizens because of a new picture that was posted to Instagram. Well, two pictures. We'll call them picture A and picture B. If you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, I'm gonna describe both pictures to you. Picture A shows a beautiful private swimming pool from a resort in Bali. It seems like one of those villas that you can rent and someone took a picture of the private pool in the back. The water in the pool is turquoise blue. There's beautiful palm trees, banana leaf trees surrounding the pool. There's this beige cushioned lounge chair next to the pool that you can lay down in and sit in the sun. It's beautiful. It looks expensive, which makes it a very typical picture to post on Instagram. Picture B is almost an exact copy of picture A, mm -hmm. but it's not a repost. It's <clears throat> not like someone stole picture A and pretended I'm in Bali too. It's a completely new photo. It shows more of the villa than the pool from picture A, but you can tell it's the same exact place. Two pictures in the same villa in Bali. So what's the big problem here? It's a resort in Bali. Of course, there's gonna be lots of people from all over the world staying there and taking pictures. Picture A was posted by girl A, since they wanna remain anonymous in the news. Picture B was posted by girl B. The problem here was they ran in the same circles where it was discovered that they were both dating the same man. Former K-pop star, former inmate, and owner of the nightclub Burning Sun, Lee Sung Lee. And I'm gonna be brief with the scandal that unfolds because there's not too much to it, but Lee Sung Lee was cheating <clears throat> on multiple women and taking them on back-to-back -back trips with the same exact itinerary. So he would ask girl A, who thinks she's in a monogamous relationship yeah, with him, to fly out to Bali to see him. He would rent a villa, take her to very specific restaurants and dates, and after five days, she would fly back to Korea, and that same day that she leaves Bali, girl B, who also believes that she's in a monogamous relationship with him, would fly into Bali to see him. She would stay in the exact same villa girl A had just left from, I mean, it's likely that wow. girl's perfume scent is still in the villa at this point, and he would take girl B on the same exact dates that he had just taken girl A. Everything is identical. He had planned the exact same trip for both girls, took them to that the same restaurant. That is calculated the same as hotel, fudge. The same cafes. He didn't even wait 48 hours before both trips. It was wow. back to back. Girl A flies into Bali. Girl A flies out of Bali. Girl B flies into Bali. <clears throat> girl B flies out of Bali. And all of this was quote unquote exposed when both girls discovered that they had posted the exact same picture of the villa and they started texting each other about their Bali trips. The story was sold to dispatch and some netizens commented on the scandal. I hope the girls don't think that it's just girl A through B. Suddenly probably has women A through Z. I thought he was in jail. That's what a lot of people were also saying. Like, like what, this what's recent, going on? Wasn't Why are we what? writing these random cheating articles about a literal criminal? So what's is happening? He in jail or no? He's free. He's free? He's what, out was of he in jail. jail? He was in, in jail. Oh, he's for, already out. He was only in there for one and a half years. Wow. And now he's back to dating yes. people wow. already. Back to, yeah being involved wow. with women why a would someone want to date a person with that kind of shocked background That's what i was i was thinking too i was like even what? after going into prison for what he went into prison for you are these women just after like oh we don't care or we just want money too i'm sorry that 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 just sounds really responsible too well you know because like he's from what we've learned he's a piece of shit and that went to prison Rightfully so. And then, obviously, how do you even, you know, even... Oh, my God. 
have someone that wants to make a connection with you after you are that. Dude, that's what we're shocked by. If that makes that sense. That is crazy. Like, like did they not hear about his his news? Or is it as you said, people don't believe that he was actually that he knew about it was a part of this? Cause that is just yeah, insane. Yeah, yeah. Like, people are still I like under the it. like. Oh, he didn't do anything wrong. He's he was innocent. He was being framed or whatever. But they were know. shocked that he was in the news. They were shocked that he was out of prison. They were shocked that girls would even go out with him. That they would travel all the way to Bali to be mm-hmm. with him in the first place. When his club, Burning Sun, mm-hmm. was exposed for basically having a trafficking ring operating during club hours. Yeah. Wait, how is he only a year and a half? That's I'm sorry, if you go out with a known trafficker, I don't have pity for you for getting cheated on. What? I don't know. For me, I have, I have, you know, sympathize with the people being cheated on. But not if you go out with a known trafficker that went to prison for it. Yeah. yeah. The, the what? Like he's disgusting. Why are a you A lot here? of people actually speculate that this is Hung Lee trying to get back into the industry. Ah, it sounds counterproductive. So it was just hired news. Like, okay, let's stir up these rumors. That's so fucked. What a sleazy way to try to get back into it. Because why would a cheating scandal be good for him? But to have these mini scandals that sound like celebrity scandals are probably better than having Burning Sun as the last scandal. And God wow. forbid he's trying to make a comeback. Like, I'm not even sure how that's possible. What? But just in case that's his end goal, let us all refresh our memories of the case of the Burning Sun. What was later dubbed the VIP. He hasn't come out with anything, right? A young woman named Min Jung. He hasn't come out with anything yet, right? I don't, I don't know. They might tell us. Woke oh. up in a bed. And her eyes still felt really out of focus. That's how she describes this whole feeling is her eyes feel out of focus. She tries turning her head to see where she is. And she doesn't recognize... So instead of feeling pity and then actually feeling bad about doing all this fucked up shit, he just is like... Well, I have to get back into good graces with everybody. Like, what the fuck? That 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 pisses me off so much. That you that do, like it doesn't no it doesn't sense. even that. Well, I have to I have to keep going. I guess like no. Look what the fuck you did. You don't deserve to be seen in the light anymore. Is the room that she's in? She doesn't even remember how she got into this room to begin with. In fact, she doesn't remember much or really anything at all for the past few hours. She keeps blinking and trying to reach for any memory of even the last hour. There's literally nothing in there. And then a man walks into the room. She remembers him. But before she can act, he's on the bed, holding her down, strangling her. She's kicking, biting him, trying to push him off of her, but he's way too strong. He's simultaneously strangling her with one hand and using the other hand to cover her mouth. He's using his body weight to push down on her body. She felt like she was going to die. Every time she tried to get up, he pushed her harder down into the bed. Her neck is bent against the headboard at a dangerous, painful angle. And she would later say, I felt like I was going to die. She could not get this man off of her. He would proceed to rip off her clothes and essay her. Each time he pushed her, she could feel her neck bending more and more against the headboard. She said she felt like her neck was going to snap. After this brutal assault, she grabs the mini trash can by the bed and she throws up everything that she has in her system. The throw up was this dark brown color. It was blood. She said at this point, she really, really, really felt like she was going to die because earlier the focus had been trying to get him off of her. But now, now that he's off of her, she doesn't really know what his plans are. Min Jung likely ran through all of the options in her mind. She clearly could not fight him off physically. So she said she got on her knees on the carpeted floor and begged for her life. She was trying to appeal to any sort of humanity or even empathy, if he had any really. She cried that she just wanted to go home. She would never go to the police about this. Oh my God, she just wanted to see her mom. That's all. She just wanted to see her mom. She finally looks up at the man, this kidnapper, this rapist, and he just starts laughing. He's giggling at her begging for her life. And he responds, if you take a selfie with me, I'll let you go home. What? What? Like he, evidence? He takes out his phone, f- turns on the front camera, grabs Min Jung, and basically forces her to sit on him. Okay, now smile. 
Minjung doesn't really know what to make of this. Is he playing a game right now? Like, why would he want to take a picture with her? Was he really going to let her go? She said that she squeezed out a small smile and the man kept his promise. He threw her clothes at her face and pushed her out of the room. She booked it. She didn't even wait to put on her clothes. She just ran down the hallway of this hotel building, out the main door, into the middle of winter in South Korea, middle of the night, pitch black. It's snowing. She's half barefoot but she doesn't feel any of that she's running towards the main road with her shoes and her pants in her hand and this other hand is stretched out trying to flag down the closest taxi she wants to get out of here and as far away from that man as possible because who knows what if he comes back what if he changes his mind thankfully a taxi stops and she gets in frantically she gives her address <clears throat> and when she sees the hotel disappear from sight the fight or flight that had kicked in it probably finally calmed down because she looks down and realizes she's still naked from the waist down wow. and there was a taxi driver looking at her in the rearview mirror i mean of course we don't know why this man was looking at her it could be that she's naked from the waist down and he's like why is she naked mm -hmm. we don't know if she, he had any sinister intentions i don't think so but she put her clothes over her lap trying to draw the least amount of attention on herself from the taxi driver she tries to take inventory of everything she has she notices she doesn't have her phone credit card or her winter jacket i mean it's bad but what's worse is that she's <laughs> missing hours in her memory she has no idea how she got to that hotel with the man that she was there with after getting home, Min Jung gathers herself as best as she can and goes to the police station. She reports the physical abuse and shows them all of the cuts and bruises on her body. She said she wanted a test. She knew that she had been, I mean, this had never happened before. Her memory had always been fine, but now she conveniently has a gap in her memory and ends up at a hotel with a man that viciously essayed her. No, she was, this isn't right. She demands a drug test and she knows that this is not only going to prove that he essayed her, but he drugged her in order to do it. This was going to convict him. It was going to get her justice. Put that sick man behind bars so that he could never do it again. Who is this? Assaulting women, Nine. making them beg for their lives before throwing them out onto the street. I mean, it was despicable. She's going to make sure that he gets put away for a long time. The drug test comes. If, it, if it's someone with power, the reason he, he let her go is because he doesn't even give a fuck. Right? He doesn't even care about getting caught because he knows that he's protected anyway. What? Like, I, uh, if that's what's going like, to... Back. There are no drugs in her system. What? There are what? There's no that drugs in her system. I fucking knew it. And I'm sure she could tell that the police what? were looking at her like she had lost her mind. She said the police started treating her... Like she was a liar. Like she was a what? Person, as if she's just making up lies to get back at a man that she slept with. And she's wondering, why would I do that? I mean, women don't get anything good out of being a victim of a crime, especially in a place like South Korea where female victims are constantly shamed. Why would she make up this kind of lie? Because the man is Chavanos Ratakul. Let's call him Chav. He is a wealthy Nepo baby of influential Thai politicians, and he is considered a young businessman. But he's honestly just a Nepo baby. The police were asking Min Jung with these- He's not a Nepo baby, he's a piece of shit is what he is. I'm calling him a piece of shit, because he's a piece of shit. Patronizing looks on their faces. He's a pause, baby. As if kid in a lie. Wait, so the police knew it was him? Yeah. What? She was like, I know this man. Let me give you the name of this man. I remember oh. this man. Wow. They're like, are you sure it was really... I mean, we heard from witnesses that saw you guys at a club together and said that you guys were very close. And he is from a wealthy family. Are you sure that you weren't just interested in him? And maybe you went back to the hotel with him, did something that you're not very proud of. Min Jung felt like the police aren't even doing a thorough investigation. They just saw a negative test, rich man being accused of must be some sort of gold digging scheme to get money out of the guy. Min Jung is like, yeah, no, that doesn't make any sense. Do you have CCTV footage of the hotel reception? Oh. Because I, in the hotel lobby, I can assure you, I did not walk in there willingly. Technically, even if she did willingly walk into the hotel with this man, I don't think that means she wasn't assaulted. I just want to put that disclaimer out there. But she's trying to prove something, anything to the police so that they take her seriously, which, you know, they really should have done in the first place, but... Regardless, they pull the CCTV footage and Min Jung is floored. It doesn't make any sense. 
she sees herself walking into the hotel with the man willingly. He's not dragging her. She doesn't even appear to be. Dr- She's walking normally. What? stable she's walking at a leisurely pace if anything she's almost leading the man. she's walking in front of the guy what she's having an animated conversation with him she's seen on cctv camera of the hotel lobby smiling at the man what the fuck? how is this possible that, how is that possible chav is thai but since he's the son of influential politicians he's a celebrity back at home the allegations followed him all the way from south korea to thailand he did some news interviews where he completely denied it all. I mean, as expected. But he even reported feeling sad. Yeah, he said, I feel very unlucky to have been swept into a case like this. I'm innocent, and I feel that this is all very unfair. And as a way of proving his innocence, the news channels played the CCTV footage of the two of them walking into the hotel. He said, when I was going into the hotel, Yo. she followed me. She was 100% conscious. The CCTV shows it all. I didn't use any force or put her over my shoulder or carry her in. Min Jung felt like she was going crazy. She was being framed as this liar, accuser, manipulator, gold digger. I mean, they used a lot of eloquent words in the media news outlets, but they basically said she found out that he was rich, seduced him, took a picture with him because she was having fun, and now she's turned around and cried rape because she wants his money. Mm, so the photo was released. Yeah. And that became like something that, oh, wow. Chav is like, look, we had a good time. She's smiling. Does that look like someone who's fearing wow. for her life? Min Jung knew that she would never in a million years lie about something like this. And you know what? There was something odd about the CCTV footage. Sure, was it at fake? first it seems like she's happy to be there, but she has zero memory of it. And second of all, it's negative eight degrees outside in South Korea. Where is her jacket? She remembers wearing a puffer jacket that night, but she's not wearing it in the hotel footage. Somebody so what else. Is she wearing? Like thin light sweater. Okay, like we're, we're your way. Yes. Like sweater. Okay. It's just very strange. She's an adult. No one just leaves their jacket out of de- Even if you feel hot, you carry your jacket. Yeah. Where is her jacket? <clears throat> it just isn't something that she would do. So she keeps trying to piece together the events of that night. So and it feels is it like not there are just holes in her memory. As if someone had taken a scalpel and carved out a section of her memory. Clean precision. She does remember, though, hours long before the hotel. She was getting dressed up to go with her friends to the Burning Sun Club. None of them Mm. were really club goers like that, but they just wanted to see what the hype was about. And it really did live up to its reputation. They walk in and the club is packed. Everybody's letting loose, enjoying themselves. It wasn't one of those like stuffy, stuck up environments where everybody is eyeing each other up and down. The music is good. I mean, it's loud, but it's very good. Everybody's dancing. It's a nice break from the work and the school. She remembered it was it was fun. She remembered her friends had all purchased a table. They sat down and she offers, hey, I'm going to go to the bar and get us all some drinks. At the bar, she felt this gentle tap on her shoulder. Turns around and it's a man. Now, to give you further context, the Burning Sun is kind of known to be a Wattpad club. Yeah, what? kind of, right? In the what sense that? that there were some anecdotal reports that women would go to the Burning Sun, run into wealthy, young, attractive foreign businessmen, and start dating them. Which is just like an innocent, cute, um... hot pad dream. It kind of implied that most men at the Burning Sun are well-connected. Still don't get them in a what pad, but okay. Yeah, why is kind it of a attractive. So it's likely okay, Min Jung was like, oh, oh my god, this is kind of funny. It's like my own little what pad mm-hmm. moment, right? The man is tall. Oh, is it because Wap has like, uh, was it fan fiction? So you write, you know, kind of like, oh, look, I met this rich man. You know? Okay, okay, okay. Is that what I mean? I'm not sure. So there's no yeah. negative connotation to Wattpad. Yeah, I thought, I thought, yeah, yeah, I thought she yeah. was gonna say, like, there was rumors of people being SA. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Importantly, he was a gentleman. He kept a respectful distance, kept his eyes on her face, not her body, didn't even try to touch her waist, touch her arm while he laughs, none of that. No physical contact. He's kind, talkative, respectful. In this loud, busy club with people actually dancing on each other, this tall, handsome guy is asking her about her pets and hobbies. 
He's very nice. She even joined him in his VIP room later to talk about all these mundane things, and it was kind of cute and wholesome. Min Jung's having fun, but at the end of the day, she is still a girl at a club, and that is something that you never really forget. So when he offers her champagne and whiskey, she's like, oh, I don't really drink champagne, but I'll take some whiskey. She takes three shots of whiskey that night. I'm not a big drinker, so to me, I have no idea how much that is, but apparently it's not much at all, especially if you know your limits, which Min Jung did. She knew that three shots of whiskey would not even make her tipsy. Maybe on an empty stomach, but she ate dinner before she came. I mean, it was just, it was nothing. Not enough to black out, though. Like, I agree. And she didn't even take the shots back to back. She's not like even if that down. is a She's lot for careful. people. Not enough to black she out. She spaces them out. Yeah, three water shots. Is, mm. She even told the guy straight up, "Hey, I'm not really fond of being drunk, so I'm just gonna take it." Because my girl gets drunk off like one shot, but that's just because she has zero tolerance. But like not but enough like, to black three out. Shots so, three shots wouldn't. Shots what? Even even her, she wouldn't black out with three shots. So there was definitely something in that alcohol. Definitely. He was so nice about it. He kept pouring her glasses of water and sliding it in front of her. Oh. Here, drink the water since you don't want to get what drunk. What the fuck was in the water? She thanked him and they continued on with their conversation. I don't trust him. No, until we'll she felt this out of body, almost a floating sensation. Mid conversation, her eyes go fuzzy. She was trying to be polite and focus on what this man is saying, but it's like her eyes were out of focus camera lenses. She tries wiping her eyes discreetly, blinking, but even her brain starts to feel fuzzy. It feels like she had been drinking heavily all night long, but that doesn't make any sense because she had been so careful not to get drunk. She had even been taking just glasses of water in between her shots of whiskey. She tries to rub her eyes again, but she said that her hands were not coming up to wow. her face now. She tries to move even just one finger. Nothing's moving. It was kind of like sleep paralysis where you can't even move, though you try really, really hard. And even with something like sleep paralysis, there's this strong level of panic associated with that feeling of not having control over your body. But imagine that experience at a club with a bunch of strangers. I'm sure it's a different level of confusion, stress, anxiety, panic. Her body was no longer responding to her brain. The man that she had been talking to still going on and on about how he had a flight scheduled tomorrow to go back to Thailand and he's just fading into this big blur and she heard his voice through it all and it felt like she was listening from a completely different dimension it sounded very distorted she heard him say so you have to make me happy today and that's it she doesn't remember anything else after that just waking up in that bed to be assaulted she knew she wasn't going crazy even though everyone including the police are trying to convince her that she's going crazy she's thinking I must have been and she had a sneaking suspicion that something was in the water mm -hmm. at Burning Sun. And water is a big business at Burning Sun. The employees of Burning Sun are incentivized to bring VIPs water, to procure good water and protect the VIPs water and deliver. I was thinking, dude, it was like, yeah, it was like, it's like the water. from the way she said it, it's like, it sounds like they opened the bottle of water right in front of her and poured the water or they must ask the servers because it would be weird, you know, if someone just gives you water they bring out of their backpack. So I was trying to think of like 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 the, the, the chain of how the water got to where it is. And I was thinking it's gotta be deeper than just that. And now we're getting into it, dude, the club now good water to the vip place. table incentivizes camera. this if for vips employees were capable of doing that some of them would make close to eight thousand dollars in a single night from tips from vips Whoa. all from the big shot a night vip clients a really night eight thousand dollars really really happy there's some About in the water, water. Like, come on now you don't make eight thousand dollars the club just... would work together as a team to make sure vip customers got their mm. water they would even have group chats in real time while they're working about how things were going, how the VIPs were looking for water, how they are enjoying their water, who needs more water. They would text things like, the VIP in the room is looking for good water tonight. Okay, I'm looking for good water. Hurry, he's pestering wow. me for water. He's very thirsty. He said it doesn't even need to be good water anymore. Just someone get him some water. His Whoa. fellow coworker responds, I'll get him a side dish then. It's a little confusing. In another chat, an employee cool. texts the other employees, someone is approaching the water I secured for a VIP. Bouncer, hurry up and go protect my water. He gets a response from the bouncer. On it. 
The bouncer pushes through the crowd towards the bar, scanning the area. He spots the water that the employee is talking about. A man is with the water. So he approaches this man, tells him to get lost, and he's standing there awkwardly with the water. But it's not what you imagine. It's not a cup of water. It's not a bottle of water. It's a woman. She's very pretty. She would make the VIPs very happy. Employees at the Burning Sun have their own vocabulary when they were working. What? When they say water, they were never talking about real water. They were talking about women. Female what? club goers. That's what they call them. Not humans, not people, not women. Water. What? In Korean, like mood. I thought it was something completely yeah. different. That's like a phrase that you would use. If you go outside and you see a ton of pretty people that day, you might say something along the lines of, Wow, why is the water so fresh today? That's a way of saying, wow, everyone is so attractive today. Because the slang is, the water is fresh, means the fish in the water is fresh and tasty. Water can refer to all genders when it's used in this phrase. Like when people say the water is fresh, it's not just referring to women. It could mean, oh, the guys are attractive, like everybody's attractive. Oh, okay. Oh, there's so, something in the water. You know. The, the, the term itself is not a bad slang. A just in this it. case, they use it in the most fucked up way possible. It's just like like a product. They just see women. Yeah. Like, oh, look at this. Look, that's fucked up. Businesses. And I always try to support where I can, which, side note about it, you guys are very talented. And most business owners that I personally know use <laughs> Shopify. Shopify is the global oh. commerce platform that helps you sell guys, sure at you every stage of your business. From oh, yeah. the yeah. good video. online shop stage to the first real life the store, best sponsors. first real life pop-up stage, even all the way to did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you guys are selling scented soaps or offering okay. outdoor <laughs> outfits, <laughs> Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce oh platform Oh my to gosh. in-person POS system. Ooh. Okay, Wherever so, you, whatever you're selling, like what I was Shopify's thinking about, Shopify can even help really involve the club and employees, and therefore the said K-pop star sounded a lot and more, but it did not go the way I thought it was going to go. AI-powered all-star. It can whip up captivating content, blog posts, product descriptions. It can even generate instant FAQ How sections. How long does this and go I really on like for? Like the whole entirety of that the club and open? take your business to the next level. Right. Like you from can customize your online just store to your style with that? gorgeous, like, flexible templates. They've got powerful tools. To they even have marketing tools to help you create, execute, and analyze your online marketing campaigns. I like that Shopify covers all the hard stuff of the business so that you can just <laughs> focus on what makes your business so unique, which is the creative side. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. and you Shopify know, it, it seems like this club like has Allbirds, specific Brooklyn, and millions of other entrepreneurs like, of every size across Reputation that Plus, there are rich people there, help to support your success and that the VIP tables are very Sign up much. For a one dollar per month trial period. They they have their own thing going on, so therefore the club the owner definitely knows what's going on in his club. No what stage you're in. Like the, cl the club owner knows where the money's coming from. There's no way you can turn a blind eye to that, even if it's just like that superficial as right now. There's lingo and there's lingo within the staff. Dude. There's no way the owner isn't a part of the. The owner enforces it if there's lingo between the staff. You know? It's always like a hierarchy. Like, the staff wouldn't do that if the owner wouldn't allow it. Yeah. Water refers to women. Good water refers to very pretty women. And averagely okay women are just side dishes, they are not the main course. The goal for the employees at the Burning Sun is well. to survey the women coming into the club, pick the prettiest ones that would please the VIPs, get them drunk them before the VIPs get there so they can deliver them to the VIP. Wow. The goal would be, she is beautiful, she is beyond the point of consent, the VIP is happy. Because now the VIP doesn't have to waste his time getting her drunk so that he can essay her. He can just go ahead and do whatever he wants to her illegally. VIP is happy, the employees get a big tip. That is the ultimate goal of the employees at Burning Sun. What and nothing the makes them happier than watching the little essay of a young woman. They would text videos into their group chat of VIPs are wording unconscious women. They would text things like, look at the VIP room right now, they're doing it. They would text back, wow, it's true. From Burning Sun to Hong Kong. To go to Hong Kong means reaching the height during intimate activities. So if a weird Korean guy asks if you want to go to Hong Kong tonight, he's not asking you to catch a flight with him for a spontaneous trip. He's asking you for something. 
And employees of the Burning Sun knew VIPs were more likely to tip them and come back if they were going to Hong Kong. But very few girls ever got drunk at a club to the point of not being aware of their surroundings or passing out. Or at least you don't do that without having friends that you can trust to not let you out of their sight. I feel like most girls know how dangerous that is. So it's up to the employees to get girls into that state quickly and discreetly. Their solution was date. They, employees, sometimes even bartenders, would date the own their own female customers which you know a few things about this are so terrifying how easy it is to spike someone's drink terrifying but also i imagine if i went to a club i might be cautious of strange men around me but i don't think i would ever be really cautious that yeah. the bartender would spike my drink or that the employees would yeah Especially i mean burning. they're the ones handling your drinks like you really like they could you could put some in the whiskey behind the bar already prior to even like opening like if the whole club is doing it it's fucked normally you trust the bartender you know yeah because it's think, like if you I don't trust the like, bartender you don't trust the club don't be yeah. in the club like that's that is fucked normally the bartenders like look out for their customers is what we're trying yeah. to say yeah because like, like like i said like if if there's spiking going on they could spike prior to anybody entering. Like, oh, this bottle's spiked, this bottle's not spiked, you know, or anything like that. So it's like, you you assume that, that the people serving you are okay. Sun, one of the most, like, famous club. High-end. Most high-end club, like, yeah. what? The employees would dig their own female customers to serve them on a silver platter for higher paying male VIP customers hmm. who came to essay the female customers. They woman essayed them took pictures and videos of the assaults created a product catalog of the victims to see if other vips Fucking wanted to pay to essay these victims as well horrible. that was the real business model of burning sun they what were in the theory fuck? running a complicated trafficking ring and they got away with it for a very long time not because they're flying under the radar and never getting called out on it it's because they were being so blatant about it. There is a saying, I believe in German, and it's translated into English as, the devil was covering it with its own tail. And it's in reference to something being so out in the open, it's basically right under your nose. But you miss it because the devil has just barely hit it out of plain view. Hmm. Like hiding in plain sight. Mm -hmm. The Burning Sun's reputation was the tail. And if anyone heard any strange questionable stories coming out of the burning sun first they would question if the storytellers were even sober enough to remember the events correctly and if the answer was yes they would all just kind of shrug and say something along the lines of eh, this is just what happens at the burning sun that the club crazy. was owned by a well-known wow. korean celebrity and a bunch of investors and the sentiment for a lot of koreans at the time was what else do you expect to happen at a place like the burning sun it doesn't have a wholesome wow. reputation. The club was co-founded by Lee Seung Lee, who is known as the Great Gatsby of South Korea. And not because he's a fan of literature and that's his favorite book, but because he throws insane, lavish parties. I'm talking a whole line of bottle girls coming out in line, holding $1,000 bottles of champagne in each hand with insane sparklers shooting out of them. And it's not just one or two bottle girls, it's like a whole parade of them stacked champagne glasses ready to be filled pretty women everywhere uniformed girls in white and gold sparkly dresses popping ten thousand dollar bottles fifty thousand dollar bottles it was crazy this is the same guy Sung Lee, where for his own birthday he had booked at a full luxury resort in the philippines so that nobody else could stay there flew 150 of his closest celebrity, Nepo baby, politician children friends Jeez. from all over East Asia, not just South Korea, but China, Taiwan, Malaysia, Singapore, Japan, <laughs> everywhere, to the resort, flew them out in the Philippines to party for four days and three nights straight. These are not people that sit in economy. He's booking first class tickets for all of them. Crazy. He spent twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand dollars on just fireworks for his birthday countdown. Which is like wow, really crazy thing to do. The and the whole weekend ended up being around four hundred and forty four thousand dollars. That's crazy because his image is like the opposite of this in the band Big Bang. This is a guy willing to drop hundreds of thousands, if not like half a million dollars on his birthday party. 
And he started as this humble, insecure boy. We're going to get into all of it. You know, this became the appeal of Burning Sun. The general population of Korea had started to hear about Seung Lee's parties, started to hear about the new Great Gatsby of South Korea, and they wanted to go to one of Gatsby's. In yeah, Seung I mean, that makes sense. But like, back before Seung people Lee hearing all Burning this, seeing all this online and be like, well, I want a party like that. The marketing behind it is like, it's scary because it's like you people want to go to it. Mm-hmm. And then it makes it perfect, you know, for these for for these predators to you know, to get more people in the club. Like that's that's the scary part. Son, there's no way. How do you get on a celebrity's guest list? But now with Burning Sun, the club, they can experience it firsthand. Wow. So yeah, chaos is a party expected. with celebrities. People would say, Did you hear about that or underage like a girl? What? what? The underage girl that stole her mom's credit card and spent it all at Burning Sun. Apparently, the mom found out, rushed to Burning Sun. The bouncers called the cops on the mom. Mom gets handcuffed, dragged away. But the crazy thing is, there's speculations that it wasn't just a girl with a fake ID who wanted to party. That maybe Burning Sun was trying to target underage girls to come to the club. Wow. You I don't know that? how true that is. That's just what happens at the Burning Sun. You hear These that is alarming. People would get. There was another report of a couple that went to the Burning Sun, and the girlfriend had, you know, she felt comfortable. She was going to this wild, crazy club, but she was going with her boyfriend. So if anybody approached her, she would just say, "Oh, I have a boyfriend, and he's right there." Or if she was scared, she could just ask the boyfriend, "Hey, can you just take me home? I don't really feel safe." That night at the Burning Sun, her own boyfriend, d- her with date. <gasps> at the club then assaulted her at a hotel and filmed it without her consent that's true or what she filed a police report against him wow the boyfriend claimed my girlfriend consented to it all we're dating of course she consented she wanted it she said when you're on ghb the date it feels like you're in a trance you just do whatever you're told to do, and you kind That's of hear scary things, but you have no recollection of anything once you truly the wake up fuck? and step out of it. You feel like a zombie, that you can take orders, but you don't remember any of that. But it's just what happens at the burning sun, right? How can they control what kind of boyfriends come in with what kind of intentions? Then another story came out. A witness, Miss K, stated that she was with this guy that she had met at Burning Sun, and he's like, hey, do you want to come up to my hotel room upstairs? Because the Burning Sun is attached to a hotel. She accepted. She said that she was just going to go up there to have a drink with him. But as soon as he opens the door to the hotel room, she sees something very, very alarming. A woman is laying unconscious on the couch, and a man is shoving his face in her chest and climbing on top of her. He gets off immediately like he had just been caught doing something. He's friends with the guy that she walked in with. So I guess they're sharing this room or something. And he just starts laughing and he's like, oh, yeah, like, you know, this is my girlfriend and she's super drunk right now. But that's not what it felt like. The girl didn't just look super drunk and something about the whole vibe. It didn't seem like his girlfriend either. She called the police, but they responded super nonchalantly about it, saying, well, technically no crime really happened, did it? So once again, some people, including the police, were just saying, eh, it's just what happens at the burning sun. Another story was of a girl named Sarah. Yeah, maybe it shouldn't be happening. Sarah said that she didn't really know too much about the burning sun, other than the fact that her friends would go to the club and come back with these crazy stories of how they felt so extroverted and crazy and it was a blast Mm -hmm. and how fun it was. And she's thinking, wow, this is kind of... This is insane. My friends are normally insane introverts that hate leaving the house, and this club is bringing them out of their shells. Naturally, she's curious. She gets connected to a friend of a friend named Anna, who said that she had been a big party goer, and they formed this friendship. Anna offers to take Sarah to the Burning Sun since she had been there before, and Sarah has no clue that Anna didn't just go to the Burning Sun a few times. Anna worked at the Burning Sun as a runner. Once they get to the club, Anna gives Sarah a pill and encourages her to take it. It was Ket, which is known to sedate, incapacitate, and cause short-term memory loss in people. It can also be used as a date rank, which an employee of a business befriending a young woman, lying about her affiliation with said business, and supplying the young girl with at said business, that sounds like it's been ripped out of some sort of trafficking handbook. But again... What? Uh, the fuck? We don't really know the relationship between Sarah and Anna. And let's say an employee did that. She could have just been a weird employee that does drugs 
It's not representative of the club. And it's just what happens at the Burning Sun. There were other rumors that Burning Sun employees had undercover doctors to be around just in case a VIP or someone in the club overdosed on drugs so that these doctors would be available to try and resuscitate so that no one would get busted for drugs. This is a very speculative... But if there's many cases keep happening with drugs. I mean, they were connected, so they weren't going to get caught regardless of the news that came out. Like, they were connected with the police. The police department probably went there. Like after the, the, the yeah, the and the beginning she mentioned that there yeah. were like the heavyweights of the police force. We know how the bad dr like drugs cases, even marijuana, is seen as like the ultimate sin over there. So it's like a club that's like that's what that thing's gonna happen. It's got to be shut down then. Yo, what freaking gets me is that the employees. They are the ones that are you know that are helping run this whole thing. None of them say shit. Dude, they're getting paid, None of man. For they some reason, they you know, I thought mold. it was all just, like, messed yeah. up dudes. There's women in here, too, that are just as guilty. That are just doing this even more so, as you said, bef befriending yeah. minors just to get more money. It's, what the I mean, hell, dude? Are, I mean, everything, everyone connected to this. They're just disgusting. Because at the end, what? the whole ultimate Not goal of this... a single person was, in the whole chain. ...was just for perverted pleasure. Like, that's just the... You're what ruining people's the lives. fuck? You're people. I don't know if I can say that in the video, actually. Or, I don't know. You, sh you shouldn't. As saying people just for your own twisted pleasure. Like, it's like, what the what fuck? What the are you doing fuck? In your life? Like, that's... How? That's, it's... Uh, <gasps> so take it with a grain of salt but later with everything that comes out it's not completely unbelievable all in all all these people that were coming out with their stories of the burning sun they're getting brushed off so of course if the police if their closest friends and family don't really take them seriously why would they go to a bigger audience and tell the world hey something weird is happening at the burning sun it almost became normalized for alarming stories to come out and people would just laugh it off and say, ah, Burning Sun is crazy. That's so wild. So let's talk. About that is so freaking wild. Club. The Burning Sun Club was attached to an upscale hotel. It's called Hotel Le Meridia. I'm trying to pronounce it in the French way. And uh, both club and hotel are going to be linked in a really dark way later. Burning Sun's business model was that once those club doors open and patrons start flowing in, two separate business operations are going to be running at the same time. The legal operation and the underground VIP operation. The legal operation runs like most popular high-end nightclubs. Weekends, there are lines wrapped around the building. Every young adult wants to party at this exclusive nightclub. It became a lifestyle brand. Even if you weren't necessarily having fun at the Burning Sun, just by taking a picture and tagging it on your Instagram story meant that you were someone. Not everyone could get in, and that's why everyone wanted to get in. Wow. Of course, like other clubs, guys had to pay a cover fee to get in. But if you were a tall, attractive young woman, you would get in for free. Side note, I'm not a club goer, so this doesn't really impact me either way. And I'm not saying that women shouldn't get into clubs for free. I think women should be allowed into a lot of places for free, like the boardrooms. But we are a capitalistic society. And at the risk of sounding dramatic, if you are not the one paying, you are the product. A bunch of guys wanted to go to the club because they knew Burning Sun had high standards for women. So only the prettiest girls got in for free. A bunch of girls wanted to go to the club because they knew that in order for guys to enter, not only did they have to pay a cover fee, but Burning Sun also attracted a certain kind of man. And usually, if you saw a guy with, at a VIP table at the Burning Sun, that meant that he did very well for himself. And then, of course, there were just the people that were curious about what the hell was going on inside. So they're like, let me just go once. So within the first few weeks of opening, Burning Sun made around $1.4 million. Whoa. What was the After first admission week? Business, their earnings doubled. And oh. that's just the legal side of their business. Wow. I would imagine they're bringing in a lot more money with their underground business. Cover fees are a small source of the legal income. The main money maker for the club's legal business was alcohol packages, VIP tables. Burning Sun made the money spending experience fun and lavish if you purchased an alcohol set for your table beautiful women in short dresses would come with sparklers in bottles parading around you to let the whole club know that you just made a horrible financial decision <laughs> they had that was a, that was a good one 
That that seems like every other club now. I feel like that's just club 101. You do that, right? Five main sets. The heavy. Then th that being given, those are the only things I've seen on TV because I actually don't club. David, do you club? Like that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I go to clubs, club. but the clubs that I go to, like, there's been clubs where I felt like weird, like you know, like the type of people that are there just doesn't make you feel safe oh. and you leave. Then there's other clubs like the the one here in Orlando. I don't, I'm not gonna say the name just because everything's just really weird about it about this whole video. Yeah, that is it feels like it's more safer. The people are different. It's all different. The, the environment is different and cleaner, and everything's just so much safer. But still, either way, like everything about the clubs is. The way that like, you know the VIP tables, the the drinking, yeah, it's very standard. the you buy like a table with the drinks, like women usually going for free, you guys have to pay a cover fee. It's pretty standard stuff that goes on. Vincent, but yeah, which included five bottles of champagne for ten thousand dollars. What? Continental said a fifty thousand dollars for eighty chains, bottles sir. of Dom. 80 i don't even know wait so the heaven set is the cheapest one the heaven set they're all like down payments on a house like yeah. 50, it's the cheapest one oh. that's that, that fifty thousand one, one dude that's for like a million dollar house continental down set b included 30 bottles of jay-z champagne and it's fifty thousand dollars continental set c 40 bottles of a different high-end champagne fifty thousand dollars and lastly, the I better be getting that stuff in gold. That is so not worth it. Most That's expensive like set was called the Mansoor set. Ow. Apparently, it was named after the dance. vice president of the UAE, who is known in Korea as a world class rich person. That's what they call him, literally, a world class rich person. His net worth is $30 billion. <sighs> yeah, I would say so. He's the United a Arab rich Emirates? He's part of the royal family. Oh, yes. I see, I see. Yeah. The set comprised of 22 bottles, and it was priced at $100,000. It's alleged that Sung Lee made up the Mansoor set for fun, thinking nobody's going to spend $100,000. But people did. There was one Taiwanese businesswoman that would come in and blow $200,000 in one night. A businesswoman? Well, some sources report she's a businesswoman. I would say most sources report her to be the housewife of, of a businessman. Uh, yes. Okay. She would later become an investor in the club and Sung Lee's oh. bottomless purse. Huh. Side note huh? about her. I don't know if she saw the future of the business. That's why she invested and spent so much time at the club. Or if she just had a love for Big Bang. I kind of get the feeling that she's just uh, obsessed with Big Bang. She, she must bring love Big Bang. She bags to be signed by Big Bang members. Oh, yeah, definitely. It just seemed like she was a super rich fan. Oh. So Did we she went know over what was the going legal on? alcohol menu for club goers. But in I order don't, to experience it doesn't sound like she sun, did know what was you going have on. To be a consistent VIP. This is going to open you up to a whole new world. When a VIP walks in through the door, first of all, they get a separate entrance. And if you spend around $10,000 a night, you get two guards to accompany you. And they are also kind of like your butlers. The employees in the club know when a vip walks in and they all cater to that person all night long making sure that everything that they could possibly want under the sun they've got it vips want to do drugs even though it's highly highly illegal in south korea no problem there's a vip bathroom at the burning sun where allegedly could be taken orally but also through the vein if that's what the vip clients wanted god damn full service Side note, a lot of these employees would spend their time working as merchandisers. This is a very important position at the Burning Sun. Merchandiser. So most merchandisers at like most establishments, they need to keep inventory of the alcohol. Make sure oh. the bartenders are giving top shelf alcohol for someone that orders it and keeping the house vodka to the house vodka orders. Mm -hmm. But there's another side of merchandisers working at the Burning Sun. And we're mainly gonna be talking about them moving forward when I talk about merchandisers. They are there to provide all other products, quote products, for the VIPs. The regular merchandisers take care of the alcohol, the food, the napkins, the crystal glasses for the whiskey. The VIP merchandisers are almost like personal shoppers, personal concierges, butlers for the night. And they usually try to plan ahead for the VIPs needs over the weekend. Oh. On Thursday, Every merchandiser from the Burning Sun sends out text messages. The regular merchandisers will send out the weekend specials to the regular clients. 
about imported champagne that they just received that's on special, or a new claw-footed bathtub filled with ice and champagne, or a new party theme with cover fee being slashed in half, or a new DJ that's going to be featuring this weekend. The VIP merchandisers will send out similar text. This week's specials are almost like a restaurant's weekly specials. Catch I think up that's probably the messages market. we were showing at the instead beginning. Instead of promoting cover fees being discounted or alcohol sets being on special, <sighs> they were sending pictures and videos of women. All unconscious women. They were naked and had just been essayed by other employees or VIPs. The merchandisers believed that these vi women, these victims, could be victimized again. So it's just a matter of which one the VIPs wanted. Under each picture or video of a girl was a price to drug and essay the girl. They're selling essay. They're not even selling. What they're selling. The fuck? So they're gonna what? Lure, lure the girls back in. Wow. So they get their numbers usually the weekend before when they're and lure them back in. And just like how the alcohol specials changed every week, the girls changed every week. The merchandisers would text the VIP, you can have this one, or how about this one? Or you can like this, a kind of playing like this. So they're referencing videos like you can also do it like this. Or text that read, I can make you a reservation guest. If you come, I can get you this girl. If there was more than one VIP client that wanted the same girl that weekend, they would open a bid. The clients would bid auction on the woman who had no idea that any of this was even happening. Many of the club investors and VIP clients were wealthy businessmen from other countries. So there were a lot of rich Chinese, Japanese, and Thai businessmen who would travel for work to Seoul and they would stop by the burning sun to let off steam. The merchandisers were really good at knowing exactly what kind of girls each of them wanted. They always stated that the Chinese VIPs really liked Gangnam Onnis. So Gangnam is like the Beverly Hills of Seoul. And Onni means older sister. It's a really nice way of saying they like faces with a lot of work done. So when they knew that a group of Chinese mm. VIPs were coming in, they would send them the weekly specials filled with Gangnam Onnis. It's like That's none of the VIPs wanted its workers. That's the part a lot of netizens were infuriated by because regardless of how anybody feels about sex work, if it is between two consenting adults, there is a level of understanding there. There yeah. is a transaction that's being made. Like, this isn't best, sex work. This is just... The fuck? Like, best case scenario? Essay. Oops, it's sorry. Both parties get exactly what they want. And I say that in defense of the workers, right? Because usually yeah. they get the shorter end of the stick. No. Anyway, it would be a bit more acceptable if this club was illegally running some sort of brothel. But that's not what's happening. They're straight up trafficking. I mean, this is like human trafficking. None of the VIPs wanted sex workers. They wanted a girl next door, truly did not know that she was getting and being filmed while being assaulted. They wanted victims. That's what they wanted. What kind of fucking horrible human wants that? Like, what is wrong? Like, dude, and there's so many people that are making this club work that way that they even have such a complex way of doing it and they know exactly how to do it because of so like many all the employees must fuck know up going on. sick disturbed people keeping that business going that is fucking insane dude but choose a girl through text ahead of time they showed up without advance notice the merchandisers would go out and pick out the like, girls legitimately that everyone being okay with this just because they get paid the a lot fuck is it's so like, did everybody go to jail for this? Because even the even Sungli only went to jail for a year and a half. So what about everybody else? Did they go for like a month? Dude, I want to fucking know how everyone ended up. They better be in jail. We know Sungli isn't. Did the VIPs the type fuck? and bring them into the VIP room. So they just walk around on the floor. Yeah. And just any girl that had come to spend money at their establishment, a potential victim. Or the VIP would already have their eyes on a girl or two in the club, and they would just be brought in. They would request, I want that one and that one. The employees would go those girls and bring them in. What? And just to reiterate this point home, sorry if it feels redundant, but it is a huge part of this case. These women that they're picking to bring to the VIP rooms are not employees of the club, and they are not sex workers. And I don't say that to say employees no. or sex workers are not as important, but I'm saying if it was an employee or a sex worker, they would be there for work. Like these women literally came as so customers. Have no. That's the main point, you know. 
like these are just people that want to come in club dance drink have fun with their friends and some people will be like like oh they shouldn't be going out anyway they, they're, they're like trying to blame oh. these, these women these girls for just wanting to go on a, a night out like that they should be able to without having to worry about this so it's not like there's anything wrong with them going out because they themselves didn't know what the fuck was going on bro they're going to a club to have fun to dance to have a great freaking time to party like you're like in a party of Gatsby. You're not going there to get fucking pimped out. Like it's disgusting. Like what the exactly as Stephanie said, you know, like if, if, if this was like a brothel and like sex workers, that's different. As yeah. as this is like this is like con conscient transaction between two humans. This is not fucking it, man. That like is someone not someone choosing that lifestyle. Why they like that's how they want to work or you know whatever it may be but this isn't even that like it's not it's just dude this is legit they get to, human like, traffic like they're getting like these women are getting picked off like a menu like oh i, I went that was and i went that way Ex like, what the hell like as kevin said you can't like it, anyone who's blaming any anyone who goes to like, like yeah, a club or whatever too, to just have fun and enjoy you know dancing and whatever and and if you blame them there's some fucked up about you no idea like what the hell that they're being chosen to be victimized they're like minjong just hanging out with friends the assaults would either happen right in the vip rooms or upstairs in one of the hotel rooms of the la meridia the fact and that the, the club's owner was out in, in a year and a half club. is fucking so is mind boggling would either happen right in the VIP rooms or upstairs in one of the hotel rooms of the La Meridia. And the hotel also happens to be an investor in the club. So there is a question of how big and how well thought out this operation was from start to finish. The hotel owns close to 50% of the club. Oh, okay. The speculation being perhaps that was the whole point that Burning Sun was created mm. for this reason. It's not a club that happened to fall into... Trafficking, yeah, but rather, partnered. yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, how trafficking. did this all I think play the unsettling out? thing about this case is both operations were done pretty out in the open. This is a club. It's not like one of those money laundering schemes where a front is a churro shop and behind the scenes is God knows what. We'll never know because the public will never see it, hear about it, know anything about it. But with Burning Sun, they're running these operations in front of all the club goers. <laughs> I would liken this to the feeling of going to a supermarket, shopping for beef, not knowing that there are security cameras watching you and another group of people behind those cameras shopping for human meat. Like that's the feeling, I'm sure. Yeah. And because nobody really knew what was going on inside the burning club, aside from victims who were staying quiet out of mm -hmm. fear, people were lining up, fighting, paying to get into the burning sun, a place that would turn out to be a literal hell for the victims. And it all gets exposed by a 29-year-old man by the name of Kim sang -gyu. We're gonna call him Kim for the rest of the story. November 24th, it's not 2018, park. Kim went to Burning Sun with a bunch of his friends. It was his friend's birthday. They're all there to have a good time. It also happened to be the first snow, Cheonnun, <laughs> which is a very special day in Korea. We're supposed to make a wish and spend it with your loved ones. It's a very cute, romantic day. So Kim decides to go outside. He's in the burning sun and the snow starts falling. So he's like, oh my God, I'm gonna go outside just quickly to see the snow. He kind of parts with his friends and on his way out, he sees a woman half passed out, barely conscious being dragged out by a man. She looks like she's trying to grab onto passerby. She doesn't wanna leave. Uh -huh. It's clear well, it's, this it's is it's not that, consensual. Uh -huh. She clearly wants help. So Kim decides, I'm gonna help. He decides to block the man from taking this woman and this man happened to be a VIP client, and the employees of the Burning Sun did not take well to Kim standing in the VIP's way. Wow, so the, they're like blatantly. Yeah, oh, protecting the wow. VIP. Wow. Not even like, oh damn, maybe the we should also like, did not appreciate oh, that not Kim do was this now right standing now. In or their way you know, like, they were just like, no. Tip. So they drag Kim outside Sister. in front of Burning Sun CCTV cameras into the snowy road, and they start beating him. They start pummeling the him. Fuck? The club executive was one of the main perpetrators. He trips Kim fuck? with his foot, grabs Kim by the hair to hold his head in place, uses his other hand to punch him in the face repeatedly. It was getting to the point where even one of the bouncers was like, hey, 
let's chill out a little bit on this customer. But this this executive is not listening. Another bouncer jumps in to help hold Kim in place. So it's easier for the club executive to hit him. At one point, the club executive even walks away from Kim, who's on the road just sitting there because now he has three broken ribs. It's painful to even try and get up. It, this is not a light beating. The club executive walks over to his little bouncers, takes off his jacket, only to walk back over what and continue fuck? beating Kim. Then when he's finally done, he just walks back into the club with the bouncers, leaving Kim on the ground. What a fucking loser. Like, that, that, that's such loser action. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You're pathetic. Like, like even, even the bouncers knew that. They were like, what the, like, like you're doing too much now. Kim is confused, scared, exactly. but also, rightfully... It sounds so fake, doesn't it? It sounds, it sounds like, like from like the worst like outline for a movie ever. And then you see the CCTV footage. And you're like, holy insane, shit. Because he's an executive. This is real. That means he has, he, he's gotten to a place where he's got money. You know, he's got people working on him. And then like the inner mentality that they got is just so... So fucked and so stupid. Like, Yo, that's what I was saying, man. Like, this is like a hierarchy, dude. Like, the, the person on top is allowing all this to happen. And then they're just spreading this type of environment through all the whole establishment here. Where it's just normal. You know, that mentality is normal. It's just ridiculous. See, like, how do you... Uh... Really, really, really pissed. He calls the police, who gets there 12 minutes later, and he's explaining to the police what happened. And he's pointing at the CCTV cameras like, hey, it's all on there. Everything that happened, you're going to see it on there, so go look at it. The police don't really do anything. What and Kim is fuck? like, what are you doing? I said the person that did this to me is in there. He went that way, so go into the club and find him. They're still not really doing anything. What? Frustrated, Kim kicks the trash can in front of the VIP entrance, and they still don't do anything. Finally, officers decide to go into the club, leaving Kim outside. They talk with the security. They talk with the club executive that beat up Kim. And once they get back outside of the club, they arrest Kim. They tackle Kim to the ground and arrest Kim. They handcuff him from the back, which I imagine is quite painful as he has three broken ribs. Employees are oddly seen helping the police arrest Kim, which is just really suspicious if you think about it because... Yeah, 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 exactly. Even if hell? some even if a client did something wrong and they're getting arrested on the premises, why would you help? Like y there's enough cops already. Yeah. Kim would state that as he's being dragged into the police station, the officers intentionally tripped him and since his hands were handcuffed behind his back, he had nothing to break his fall except with his face. A officer tripped him? Yeah. What? He had busted his the face, fuck? had a severe nosebleed. He claimed the police also kicked him and hit him several times where he had already broken his ribs. He had several broken ribs and they still refused medical care. He was seen at the police station yelling, Sung Lee's club, you guys got money, they do hard and they do on in there. <laughs> January 28th, 2019, Kim starts going on interviews and making posts about what happened to him inside the burning sun. His main accusations were, the women are being the club. Police are getting paid by the club to look the other way. He said, screams could sometimes be heard coming from the VIP rooms of girls begging for help. These are masked by club security and then the paid off police department nearby protects the club from legal liability. The police aren't here to protect the public. They're corrupt. Kim started a Blue House petition, and it received more than 200,000 signatures in just one day. The wow. petition detailed specific and assault Thank cases God. that allegedly happened within the Burning Sun Club, as well as their sketchy and corrupt relationship with the local city police. It gained so much attention, the president at the time promised to have his team look into it. But when the Blue House looked into it, the police just turned in random reports that Kim was committing assault in the club. They what? argued, look... Kim is the one that was essaying people in the club. He was caught, dragged outside by employees, and beaten. Should he have been beaten like that? No, but the employees just really hate scum of the earth essayers. The fucking audacity! So They're all do it. Like, he even said that some employees were involved in that. To do that, to say that, to have the audacity to say that. Poor fucking out, Kim, we dude. What a slap in the face. What a spit in the face, man. Dude, he got beat up bad. It's the guy. 
With and this, then they all reversed the it all on him. Kim as some sort of he could go to jail which, now. It's a whole long story we're going to get into later. But the Burning Sun even came out with an official statement stating Kim was an offender and they had no choice but to kick him out. To support their statement, they submitted two complaints from women who allegedly were assaulted what? by Kim at the club. Suddenly, the story very quickly becomes a he said, she said situation rather than a very serious what? allegation of trafficking inside of a club. But netizens did notice something strange. The person who filed a complaint against Kim saying that she was harassed by him at the club was an employee of the club. Not saying that they can't be harassed by clients, but like, it's fishy. she's a merchandiser at the club. Oh. It was Anna, the runner. Mm. Mm -hmm. It was People Anna. didn't know that yet, but still, it was just weird. Right after he alleges that there's an underground ring happening at the club, <laughs> an employee of the club says that he is the essayer. Kim said that he was charged unrighteously and inaccurately on seven charges, including seven. defamation, indecent acts, criminal battery, and more. And our team tries really hard to not make something about something that it's not, right? But there was a feeling by the K-netizens and by a lot of people that had gone to the Burning Sun. Okay, a man has spoken out about the club. <laughs> and sure, it's kind of a he said, she said situation, but a lot of netizens were still on this man's side and supporting him, and it kind of felt safe enough for women to come forward now. Oh. Because if it had been a woman whistleblower to this, there had been other small cases of women they trying to like anonymously for come forward it, yeah. that something weird was happening mm. at the Burning Sun. They were slut shamed mm. to hell and back. But now that there was They're a male both, at the center of this bigger. whistleblowing situation, right. They felt like, okay, maybe we can also help bolster wow. his story because we have our own stories about the burning yeah. sun. Okay, that says a lot. Yeah, a lot. I mean, just like the crime itself says a lot about the violence against a certain gender. And then this just reiterates that. So, you know, like I said before that, it was people like Minto, people who are getting blamed, victim blamed. And now a man comes mm -hmm. out and they're like, okay, maybe this is our chance to expose what's really been happening. So because of Kim, a lot of anonymous women start coming forward with their stories of the burning sun. Many of these stories would confirm Kim's allegations of police corruption because many of these women reported their essays to the police and they did nothing. It was revealed that the most commonly used to essay women at the club was GHB. It's called Murpong in Korea. Well, at least that's what most commonly used slang for it. It is the most commonly used date bug even here in the U.S. It comes in a clear liquid form or white powder that becomes completely dissolved and invisible in liquid. It is odorless, tasteless, and colorless. There was Fucking a journalist insane. who experimented by taking GHB herself under the care of a doctor. She was so loopy. She alternates from being passed out to being awake and like writing things on her hand and talking about her mom. She doesn't remember a single thing. None of it. What that's the scary. fuck? But that's I not I the only thing. I generally did not know a drug like that existed. Like, the one that you could be conscious, but also not. What the... That, 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 that case where we saw, you know, about, about with the woman walking in the hotel, like, yeah. kind of leading the way, that's as wild. Stephanie said. That's I was not. like, what kind of drug is that? Because the only drug that I knew existed was the one that that I think made you go to sleep. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the all only I, that's one. Not, that, it, that I, I knew that I've existed. That's what I see on TV. You know, where it's like, oh, you passed that's out. That's the only one I've heard about. But, like, like oh, what, what did you do to my drink? The fact that there is something that makes you still be awake and conscious, and that is oh, fucking wow. insane. Like, I thought dude, it was like, the, like the, 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 the evil is of humanity to, be that to girl. create something like that. To make it odorless, tasteless, I don't know what else. It's Fucking insane. Like, did someone develop that drug specifically for that? Or was it like a like a medical drug? Like, I don't know where that would be useful. But how does it get developed? It sounds so advanced. That's wow. fucking insane. Damage. Long use of GHB can result in... Also, it sucks because a lot of the women were getting negated. Because, like, oh, they just got... They got, like, brushed off as, like gold diggers like oh you were just and then you regretted it and stuff. yeah yeah stephanie said yeah so the fact that like then the guy comes out but it, it, it wasn't like wasn't all of this just getting negated because there were people in the in the police department just in general like it, it it's just it, it goes so high up probably politicians are probably part of this
We'll find out. Most likely. Most likely, dude. Alcohol, it could even like the Epstein in thing. The victim usually the starts fuck? becoming semi-conscious just from one sip. It's like the lights are turned off suddenly. But it can't really be detected that well. It's often compared to a state of dementia. You can walk around what? by yourself, but you don't remember walking around. That is fucking scary. At the Burning Sun, some employees would request to be brought zombies for VIP room three, for what? example. They'd be like, okay, we need zombies in room three. Because GHB makes the victims able to walk and yeah, talk, but scary. they're not there. They're not making any decisions that themselves. So they fucking know that horrible. these victims are either entirely unconscious or their cognitive abilities are all heavily affected by the... So they know damn well that there is no consent that is given. And the worst part of GHB is that the basically untraceable. I mean, yeah, I mean it's not untraceable, the but it, it's not for long. So that's how the girl tested negative. Yes. So that, that, that dude, that, that shit was created in malice. That's you can't tell me that shit wasn't created in malice, who dude. Who created it? Who funded it? It's wild. I mean, if, when you say who funded it, look how much this club is making. The elite. They're making millions. That's what, what the fuck, bro? So depending on the person, the can be completely metabolized anywhere between 5 to 24 hours of use. Meaning, if what? you go home feeling like something How very long? sinister happened, you feel like, okay, I need to get my thoughts straight before I go to the police station because I can't walk in there and say, I don't know, something happened, I don't know. But by that point, the be completely out of your system. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Wow. And you would be labeled as a flower snake in Korea. It's referencing a woman who seduces men, sleeps with them, and then wakes up the next morning deciding to sue them for money. In Korea, the drug is often described with this phrase, I did this action, but I don't remember doing this action. Which I think is a really good indicator of how hard it is in a place like Korea to prove that you've been and assaulted and have the police take you seriously. At this point, everything starts snowballing. It went from a man was being assaulted and maybe a single VIP Yo, was the, 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 the woman, fact but... that this drug has like a certain slang between the the population that still somehow makes it the, the victim's fault is fucking insane how fucking scary is that the fact that it's traceless virtually like yeah, you know so you know so like grow, grow, growing up you know your parents tell you or you tell your friends or whatever is like don't don't accept anyone like anything as anyone ever gives it a club or whatever Cause you know, I, I assume the worst like that the, the drug could do was make you go to sleep. This shit keeps you conscious. What the fuck? It's that not is even so like not conscious, but walking like you're walking and stuff. Oh, it's fucking so it's like crazy. no one can even help you because they don't know. No, they that are you're, running There's even anything trafficking. wrong. Like it's exactly. Scary. What the hell? What the actual hell? Ring, and there are many, many women getting and assaulted by many different VIPs and the employees are all in on it. And the big question on everyone's mind, which, yeah, I, I don't know if it was the most appropriate question at the time, but it was, how much of this did K-pop idol Lee Sung Lee know about it? As one of the co-owners of the club, people wanted a public statement from him ASAP. Did he or did he not know that his employees were running a business at his club? Sung Lee's dad did an interview with media first, where he claimed Sung Lee was blindsided by all of this. He stated that his son had businesses everywhere, and he's still an idol after all at the end of the day. These businesses are not his main business. As much as he wants to be super involved at the Burning Sun, he just didn't have the time. And now, now he's super shocked and disappointed, just like all of you, the public. The dad said, and I quote, there's too many speculative articles about this Burning Sun case. They're only taking the other side story, and it's unfortunate that they're only focusing on that. Just because it's called the Sung Lee Club does not mean that my son was directly involved with the things that had happened. He would later go on That's to insinuate wouldn't. that the media just wanted to attach Sung Lee so heavily to the crime because it makes for a better story, makes for a better headline. The He's dad even went on to part say owner of the didn't club. Didn't even own the club anymore, and that he wasn't in a position to give huh? instructions or give orders at the club. He had a what? CEO in place for that. So Sung Lee is not the CEO of Burning Sun, just a co-founder. His dad goes on to say, I talked to Sung Lee today. He said his fans and everyone will want to hear an explanation. 
He sounded like he was having a hard time. He can't help but... Yeah, that's what people were saying. Because I did... Because, like, I think it was, like, a half a year ago. I was like, whatever happened to the sun scandal stuff? Like, because, mm -hmm. it, like, it was... It was... It popped up on our YouTube and stuff like that for, like, a long time. And then it kind of went away. So I wondered, and I looked it up on Twitter. And a lot of people's, like, sentiments, the people that were still, like, siding with Sun Lee, and it was... It was that, they, they were using that... Like, they, like, they were commenting that type of stuff. I was like, well... I don't know that. Good. My son is not in a position to directly work at Burning Sun. He's rarely in Korea and he's busy with his ramen franchise. Yeah, he has a ramen franchise. And solo concerts abroad. This time, I'm sure he really felt the burn. It's unfortunate. But last month, he received the 2019 Korea Consumer Evaluation Best Brand Award. But none of that was covered by the media. Instead, it comes out as if he's a criminal. His true intentions will be revealed through the investigation, but it's upsetting that even before the results come out, he's accused of doing hard things. He did a urine test because of this issue, and the results showed nothing was wrong. My son feels wronged. Fake news is being spread by the media. He's not a child that could hurt others. My son is having a hard time, especially because the media is making things up. Jeez. My heart hurts, too. Then, Sung Lee did an interview of his own where he stated he never bribed any police officers or a police station. He stated even if he wanted to, he didn't have that much power. He was basically just a boy that sang on stage. He said that all he did was lend his name and fame to help the club gain more foreign fans and have more club goers come. And sometimes he would DJ at the club, but that was really his involvement in the club. He said, I don't even know the financials of the club. Please tell us the details. He deets, goes on to throw his English. business partner of oh, Yuri Holdings, the company that owns 20% of the club, that is co-founded by Sung Lee. So his dad is saying, Sung Lee, my son, doesn't even own shares of the company, of uh -huh. Burning Sun. And like technically Sung Lee doesn't own shares of the Burning Sun, uh -huh. but he owns a company called Yuri Holdings that owns 20% of the club. Wow. And Sung Lee is like, you know. Like why lie? You know, like why yeah, even why try lie? Why to twist it? Cause then it comes out, you're, you're just a goofy. Now like, like as we were going through the whole explanation of, of Sung, Sung Lee's involvement in this, like the more separation between them, I was like, holy crap, what actually happened? One more details. And then that lie just is like, yup, they're, they're overcompensating, over, they're, they're, over explanation. There it is. There also, it is. the extra oh, carefulness I, that happened with the fact that he had a different company owning that club, meaning that he was, that's, pro, that's it was it. Like he was ready in case anything happened or anything came out. He'll be protected, quote unquote. Like, oh, it's I don't even it's I don't own it. It's under a company's name. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Holdings. It sounds what? like you were covering your bases. Fucking matter. Yeah, right. That makes it suspicious that right my there. Was talking about women and asking for women and trying to buy sex. And I tried to stop him, but he wouldn't listen to me. And I don't really hold that kind of power over a business partner, so there's nothing I can do if that's an adult, you know. Throws him under the bus. You report so it to the police. To the media and to the public that he's wow. going to do anything to help with the investigation. And he wants the truth out there as much as anybody else. <laughs> of course, their responses make the case blow up more. But on top of that, the business partner that he threw under the bus is actually married to a then very famous actress by the name of Park han -byeol. So he's like, hey, you know that actress? Well, her <laughs> husband is like looking for sex workers. <laughs> So, of course, the case blows up even more, right? But at least Sung Lee's fans are super relieved. They felt like, whew, we dodged a bullet. Sung Lee is still good. He's still the guy that we know and love. Other people doubted that. They thought Sung Lee knew exactly what was going on. He's the great Gatsby of Korea. And just like the great Gatsby, Sung Lee has a raging inferiority complex. No. Well, now we're gonna the get more to seasons, I yeah. usually get a lot less sleep, but I am solely energized through peppermint flavored sweets and sparkly holiday decorations, <sighs> just running straight off of vibes. But one thing I'm pretty stickler about is my hydration. If I'm hydrated, I feel like I can Jesus, go on, and on for hours. And if there That's are parts right. of my daily routine that I can make a lot more effective, I'm gonna try and do it. And I what wonder I what do, kind of information we're gonna get about him. Has made yeah, my life so much easier. I, I can get about. three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness. It's really nice because liquid IV hydrates Still two times <laughs> faster than water alone, and all in one. Forty stick. minutes, so man, and stick, however long. IV we want to stop to water. rage and about the information we're gonna get alone. there are no artificial sweeteners and now it's available sugar-free 
They've got three delicious flavors in the sugar-free option. They have white peach, green grape, lemon lime. I've always been a very citrusy person, but back. their white peach is really good. The Go. green grape is also very tart if it starts crisp, just pause it. which is how I okay. like it. Lemon lime, of course, is a classic. And I just like how easy it is. The packaging makes it super convenient to take liquid IV on the go and i always thought liquid iv were for workout people you know people who want to stay hydrated and work out at the gym which i've done before with liquid iv and i love it but it's also just for people like me running errands going holiday shopping pouring it into my water in between stops grab your liquid iv hydration multiplier sugar free in bulk nationwide at costco or you can get 20 percent off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code rotten mango at checkout that's 20 percent off anything you order when you shop better hydration today using promo code rotten mango at liquidiv.com to give you context on Sung Lee he was part of a five person K-pop group called Big Bang and I feel like for anyone who knows even a little bit about Korean entertainment or even really Korean culture at this point Big Bang is just one of those groups that needs no introduction yeah. so I'm gonna try and keep it brief for those that are just not in the K-pop world Big Bang is like the one direction of K-pop Meaning they will always be remembered at one point as being one of the most iconic boy bands in K-pop history. I'm not saying mm -hmm. right now, I'm just saying at one point they were. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that they're better than your faves or even like they paved the way or anything, but they were really, really popular. Yeah, like between what, 2008 to 2012, yeah. like they dominated the oh, world. Dominated, yeah. yeah. It is unclear how much revenue the group generated, or at least we couldn't find out an exact figure, but we did find out that they brought in $800 million in ticket sales for their concerts during their career. That's probably a very small cut of the overall revenue that they generated. That's not including album sales, streaming revenue, appearance fees, ambassadorships, royalties from music. That's just concert sales is $800 million dollars so they're an influential group and Sung Lee always felt like the black sheep of the group it's pretty evident in hindsight really? that he had an intense inferiority complex while he was part of Big Bang and it does seem like there were a few pain points for him Sung Lee applied to be a trainee for the k-pop group that would be later Big Bang there was a series of cutthroat competitions till a group of boys was narrowed down they just wanted five members everything was ruthlessly judged and criticized by YG who is picking the trainees. They had four members already picked and it was down to the last spot. Sung Lee and another boy were competing neck and neck for it. Sung Lee barely made it. It was so neck and neck. It was like, eh, I guess we'll go with Sung Lee. It wasn't like, oh man, he won by a landslide. That was so good. He really stood out. It was such a close call. And that type of complex, he felt like I'm not as good as the other members. YG was so certain on the other members. But for me, it was kind of, mm -hmm. it was kind of iffy. Now, that kind of complex doesn't necessarily make someone a bad person. Fans actually fell in love with Sung Lee for the sides of him that were shown. They remember during the early days of Big Bang, there were reality shows that they would do that showcased what their lives were like as trainees, and they would all be crammed together inside these very not-so-great apartments that the company was paying for. They would have to clean up after themselves after training and dancing for like 18 hours a day. And Sung Lee being the youngest of the group. In Korean culture, that means he has to do a lot more chores than the others. He has to do things like wake everyone up, which is harder than you think. The oldest of the group, Top, he refuses to wake up. So it's standard to see Sung Lee go into the kitchen, grab pots and pans to bang together to wake up his young. Another member would start vacuuming the wall on top of Top's face to try and wake him up because he's just, I guess, a heavy sleeper. And it's kind of like a heartwarming moment. It's relatable, it's funny, and considering how young the boys were at this point, it was endearing. But Sing Lee was always being compared to his other bandmates. I would say I remember, and this is just from memory and not research, G-Dragon, Top, Taeyang, like they had so many stands from the yeah. people that I knew personally. Sing Lee mm. just didn't really have a lot of stands from what I remember. He did seem to get a good chunk of hate comments. People joked they didn't like the size of his head, that it was really big. They also said that his legs were too short and that other members were very good looking, but Sung Lee was, um, had a relatable looking face, they said. He said he especially didn't like the comments about his head because, and I quote, it's not like I can get a head reduction. But even that moment is a good example of why a lot of people started to stand Sing Lee. He seemed like the underdog and he was not shy to show that he was vulnerable. And he wasn't like trying to be like, I'm actually really good, guys. 
He yeah. was embracing it. He's like, yeah, I am the ugliest of the group, but what am I going to do about it, right? He said he was always anxious about never having enough money. And he said G-Dragon earns extra money from songwriting and rights to the copyrights of their songs because he writes a lot of their music. Top does acting in movies and dramas. Taeyang does solo albums and concerts. Sung Lee said that he was anxious because all of them were so diverse in their earnings and their income. And he said, I am making, quote, 1% of what G-Dragon is making. <laughs> But it just sounds like he's not as talented. I don't know. When did he say this? Like, it's actually wild. Because he's like, oh, they're doing all this stuff. I'm not doing any of that stuff. Or I haven't gotten the opportunity. I don't know how it works. But of course they're going to earn more if they're doing more. I don't know. Only natural. I, I, don't, I, don't, natural. Know. I don't know. Wow. And like a lot of people with a potential inferiority complex, he starts overcompensating. It felt like he's desperately trying to make something work. And I just want to make it clear. I'm sure his idol life, like a lot of idols, if not every idol in South Korea, is cutthroat, is yeah. hard, and potentially I'm... miserable and rough. But from what we can tell, the man is not starving. He's not paycheck to paycheck. So when he's saying... I'm... He spent half a mil on, uh, on, on a birthday party flying everybody out. He definitely made, still made a lot of money from Big Bang just by itself. Yeah. Just because Millions. he earns 1% of what G-Dragon earns. Doesn't make that one percent any less. His one percent probably is like ours, like ten thousand percent. You know, like probably. come on though. Making one percent of what G Dragon is making, he's not out here working a restaurant job after mm -hmm. his training. Like yeah, he's doing. He's fine. talking about like at that point, if Top is doing acting and yeah. solo, like they are already popping yeah. at that point. Like he's a millionaire. He's yeah, he's yeah. killing it. Like yeah. as a part of Big Bang, like like but he's they, comparing he his millions his to their and billions. A lot of fans yeah. Felt bad for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's I like see. I just want to preface: we don't need to feel bad for him. He's but his image at that point is just like this soft, good boy, like very, like little, you know, very soft yes. energy. It's, it, people love it. People loved yeah, him. Yeah, nice guy, nice guy image. <laughs> yes, he said he just wanted to keep up with other members, so he learned English, Chinese, and Japanese. He opened up one of his first businesses, a training camp for idols. A lot of big names came out of there. A oh. lot of big names. Wow. Huh. So he did a training camp. Mm -hmm. huh. I was going to list some names, but I don't even want them to be like associated with Sung Lee. But like a lot of big names came and they don't even know like Sung Lee and they're not connected. Yeah, with I anything, mean, they went to a camp just in case. Yeah. They didn't but yeah, lots run. of big names closed down after a few years because one of the teachers had gotten romantically involved with a student. Oh, my not God. A good luck. He moves on with other business ventures. And by 2018, he finally made a name for himself outside of Sung Lee of Big Bang. He was hosting multiple talk shows, going on TV shows, acting in dramas, doing promotional activities for YG Entertainment. That's the agency that created Big Bang. He calls the founder of YG, Mr. YG Entertainment himself. He calls him Appa, which is dad, because of how close they are. Okay. He started a Belgian waffle cafe for his mom to run. He co-opened a restaurant called Monkey Museum in China. He had a ramen franchise called Iori Ramen, and it had multiple locations in Korea and even a branch in Kuala Lumpur. He owned 10% shares of a cosmetic medical company called Dr. Golderm. He was serving as a brand ambassador for a new music label launched by Sony Music. He was heavily wow. involved in YGX, which is a sub-label under YG Entertainment. He would also go on to build this image of himself as the Great Gatsby of Korea, which was great marketing for all of his night businesses, like his bars and clubs. Okay. So now we have a potential inferiority complex, love for lavish parties, lots of businesses in the nightlife party scene. But still, that doesn't make someone complicit in something as serious as a trafficking scheme. Yeah. Did he really know what was going on? His fans argued, absolutely not. They felt like he was innocent. This is Sung Lee that we're talking about. Do people not remember? A lot of people dug up an old clip of Sung Lee, and it had been on a TV show called I Live Alone. He was talking to another actress. It's a reality show. They're sitting there talking, and the actress recently had a baby. And out of nowhere, she asks Sung Lee, I can give you some if you want. And he's like, give me what? The soap I use. Breast milk soap. And Sung Lee looks very shocked. Oh, oh. Uh, what go? What is? What is it made from? It's soap made from a mother's breast milk. Sung Lee puts nice. his cup down to take a few what? seconds to gather his thoughts. Uh breast milk is very healthy. Yeah, 
because he doesn't want to offend her, but he still doesn't know what to say in that moment. And it's a really innocent, comical moment. The mm -hmm. actress keeps explaining. I feel like anybody will react that way, though. You're not going to hurt the mother's feelings. Some might, some might not. They might be more abrasive about it. Some be like, might. Nope. You know, my son might be like, "Ew, what?" <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> that's not, not normal. Most people, I feel like, would give that response like, "One, be shook that someone's offering the breast milk soap because that's not a normal sentence in any day life." I don't know. No, no, no. To use that one clip though, I don't know. We'll see if he's involved or not. Regardless, so far, uh, we're learning a lot about Sungli, which actually we didn't know that much about because we we got a little bit into Big Bang, but not that much. Sung Lee was definitely was one of the few that didn't stand out to me the most. I can't speak for both of us when we did Bro, check them out. G -Dragon, I don't Tae -Yang even and Pop were the ones that were standing out to us the most. Like they were. <laughs> I I almost went to the back, all the way back. I don't even remember how he looked like, bro. Like he didn't really stand out to me at all. And yeah. then you know when we started getting to K-pop, all of this also started God. going on as well. Like the more information, so therefore we just kind of like. Didn't even touch it, you know? Mm -hmm. So therefore, yeah. I am learning like about this probably for like, maybe the first time. The whole process of how the soap is About how he actually he was. Because he's shocked by all of this information and he's just trying to be polite. So he says, oh, okay, yeah, uh, thank you. Yes, of course, I, I would love some. How many do you want? I have a lot. You can just text me. He's like basically about to throw up some water if he has any in his mouth and he's t text you f f to ask for the breast milk it seemed like the actress was genuinely having a fun time shocking Sung Lee, messing around with him and Sung Lee comes off super naive super innocent super polite so fans are like you're telling me that this guy that's shy when someone offers him breast milk soap is a brilliant mastermind behind a trafficking ring breast milk boy i don't see how do they you know what it means to bomb a chat mm -mm. usually friends will start group chats on kakao talk which is like the whatsapp or wechat of korea and when they're done with the group chat or if they've said enough inappropriate comments or told enough secrets on that group chat someone will text blow up the chat one by one, the notifications come in. Blank left the chat, blank left the chat. And once every single person leaves the chat, everything in that chat gets automatically deleted by Kakao. So it's not like you can leave the chat, but still see what's in the chat. It's gone. The chat history deleted along with any videos and pictures sent into the chat. When the Burning Sun group would feel like the chat had gotten a little too incriminating, when they had texted too many pictures and videos of unconscious women, when they had talked about too many VIPs as saying unconscious women, they would periodically text out, bomb the chat, blow it up, which helps with making sure that if someone's phone is ever taken in by the police, if someone's phone is ever lost, they might see the current group chats that are probably very incriminating. They won't see years and years of incriminating activity. It's almost like an insurance policy to everybody in that chat that they were going to at least cover their asses. And it was in everyone's best interest to bomb the chat, to delete it. So they thought. JJY was part of these group chats. And some quick context to JJY, um, he's what they call a multiplayer in Korea. He's a singer, songwriter, TV personality. He's known for having this wild, fun personality. So a lot of talk shows love him. He's also very, very good at singing. He never left the chats. He was part of all the Burning Sun chats. God. He well, was part of every damn. single Sung Lee chat about unconscious well. women, See, selling women, bidding women. Out, we'll he out. never left it because he felt so sad to part with all the amazing pictures and videos of women being victimized. Fuck? So he always pretended so to shit. leave the chat last. But the truth is... He never left wow. any of them. He kept each and wow. every single one. And when his ex-girlfriend reported him for taking videos of her without her consent, and he would turn his phone in to the tech company, yeah. he would be the one to bring the whole operation wow. down. Wow. So even when he did that, he thought he could just break his phone and he's good. Yeah. Honestly, you got to you gotta be thankful for his stupidity on top of that. His wow. disgusting piece of shit. And he's stupid as fuck. So Yo, you gotta thank it though, because like if that God hadn't happened, if he wasn't that stupid, ignorance, right? It's, it's just like none of this would have been found. So yo, 
but these wow, are this is the tech so company dumb. that recovered the data from Tower Ferry victims' phones. Uh -huh. So like they knew what they were doing and they take yeah. their jobs very seriously. But he was like, uh For the sake of this whole case, how lucky is it that it was just this dude's phone that they happened to get in their hands? Oh my god. Oh well, I basically smashed Life my phone. So it's ways? fine. It was not fine. Even years before this, there was an incident that felt like foreshadowing to everything that was about to happen. JJY was on a show with Chico, another celebrity, and Chico joked about JJY's golden phone. And immediately, because they're on set filming a show, JJY's face changes for a split second. Oh. His, not as, like, he drops his face mask. Not his literal face mask, but he drops his smile, and he has this very sour look on his face. He's it's very much the off, huh? stop talking about this look. What's a golden phone? People thought Golden Phone is in these sex videos now. But Chico would later be involved in the Burning Sun controversy because netizens accused him of knowing what JJY was doing on his phone. Oh. He's like, you probably saw the videos then. Oh. Yeah, why would he, if he does, why would he put that How? information in TV? Wow. Right? That's what Chico is saying. He's saying, guys, I meant Golden Phone. At, like some. Thank God for the stupidity of these people. Wow. Their because stupidity. We'll Although that, that nothing really stemmed from that. Just did wow. to refer to someone who has a lot of good connections. So if you were to have Beyonce and Taylor Swift on speed dial, you have a golden phone because you have their numbers. Mm. And so he was briefly involved in the Burning Sun scandal. But ultimately, JJY's golden phone would bring down some of the biggest names in K-pop. February 26, 2019, the first round of messages are released to the public, and multiple celebrities would go down after the release. Along with investors, the management team, and employees of Burning Sun, there were a few key people in the group chats. Choi Jung-hoon, wholesome singer from FT Island, boy group. Wow. Yeah. Lee Jung-hyun, idol from boy band CN Blue. Kwon Hyuk-jun, brother of Girls' Generation Yuri. JJY, oh, senior TV host, celebrity TV personality. And of course, Seung Lee of Big Bang, owner of The Burning Sun. And it clearly shows that Seung Lee is involved. He is texting employees oh. about investors that are coming and he writes, give them everything they want, call the girls over. There's also a guest coming from Taiwan. Employee responds, which girls can we call right now? Oh man, it's the Chinese already? Oh my God. Take care of them so they don't get involved with others. Yes, I will stick by the VIPs. Sung Lee texts, you better do it right and make no mistakes. Another business partner tells the employee, put a boy in there too. Someone who can serve redacted. A boy who can't speak English. Someone like redacted. Employee responds, okay, we'll do. I'll do the job well. Sung Lee even texts, and which girl are you going to bring? Get the kids who give it easily. Get the kids who gives easily? Yeah, like as in, is easy to essay. Enough. Enough said. Like right there, what can you defend after that? Is people are, people are. JJ what can y you defend after that? Fans, randomly yeah. in that group chat, and he's like, "I bet the Chinese like plastic surgery girls." And Sung Lee is just like, "All right, just do well." Another partner of the business texts into the group chat, "I'm preparing the right now, so when the two come, I will guide them and make sure they end up smoothly with the VIPs in the hotel room." Sung Lee texts. Chairman's guests are also coming. I think we need to set up a separate party for them. Let's give them back a hundred times what we received from them. Guys, please look for any pretty looking girls who can possibly speak some Japanese. Let's pack the place. For Christmas, rather than us having fun, let's experience a Christmas of finding satisfaction and making others happy. This time, let's give the chairman a great time and make him happy for all the summers he sent us yachts with staff and chefs from Japan to Busan for us to enjoy. Bro, like, he is the fuck worst because he's literally manip masterminding this whole ring. He is the culprit. He is the mastermind behind this whole operation. Like, yeah. he's the worst. He's, like, the one... The way he words everything is so fucking cynical, too. Yeah. Like, this dude, it's the so way he worded it... As if he's doing legitimate, like, business or whatever the fuck. Yeah. And then... It it's not it's trafficking and you're a piece of shit like this dude knows exactly what's going down here dude he knows exactly the business model how can anyone defend him after that evidence right there are you how kidding could you me? date him after yeah. all this he's like very clearly involved dude i i how can you want to be anywhere around him 
It is not. I can't understand it one bit. This would have even been possible he's without him. Yeah, he's doing this for the money and profit, and he's literally selling women for yeah. money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like a lot of media outlets, I don't know if it's legality or they're just trying to keep it professional. But honestly, he's just straight up, in my personal opinion, like a pimp. Yeah, like a, yeah, like worse a than disgusting, that. Exactly. Yeah, vile trafficking pimp, like honestly. Yeah. In another conversation, Sung Lee talks about a girl that he likes and he writes, Redacted is actually art. I admit it. JJY text, I touch the hell out of her boot. Her boobs big, they're fake. Singly text, redacted, is coming. Like, a, a girl is coming. And JJY says, stop these foreigners from coming. Singly text, there are investors. Then another conversation, Singly writes, the party last night was a hit. Another idol says, it was successful. Singly writes, that girl, I admit it, I'm hooked. Her older sister is good too suddenly say that yeah jjy text yeah her sister was a surprise there were a lot of hidden gems yesterday friend text but there seems to be hella guys around too Sung Lee says we have to steal let's all eat domestic girls together in korea and then get married to foreign girls friend text why is blank so pretty jjy says she's the bitch both mr b and i ate lol Sung Lee texts, and I plan on eating her too. Anyone here got her number? An employee of Burning Sun text, if you do it with- Mr. Innocent, because <laughs> he, <got, laughs> he got flustered by a breast milk or so. <laughs> People are stupid, like actually. That bitch, it's guaranteed Using that secret. video is like, oh, very, so I don't know anything. naive. Sung Lee texts, LOLOL, she has amnesia. She doesn't even remember who she does it with. JJY text, nope, not amnesia, just R word. L O L O L. Well. Sung Lee text, could be she just doesn't remember. JJY is angry, he says. When she first met me, she was all BSing about, I don't watch TV, so I don't know you. But after she got drunk, she was whining and asking me to sing for her. Sung Lee says, want me to tell you something more funny, or rather absurd? I opened my eyes and I was like, why am I sleeping with Sinuna? When I was like, I thought I was sleeping with these other two girls. Where did they go? LOL, LOL. In another chat, Sing Lee is asking a VIP a client about what shit. kind of woman they like. And the client responds, I'm not sure. South Asian men like white skin. So someone with fair skin and innocent and pretty features or the opposite, just sexy. Girls like blank, blank and blank who are innocent yet sexy or just a super fancy glamorous girl. Those types of girls. Wouldn't that type of style work? We want over 160 centimeters tall. Thinner. It's not too picky, though. Girls from Korea will do. There are other chat logs where it seems like Sung Lee is sending girls on trips with VIP clients. He asks a VIP about an Indonesia trip that he has coming up, and the VIP says that they want ones that are under 10K per person. Sung Lee writes, I understand. It's 10K per person, right, Mr. CEO? He proceeds to send pictures of five different girls and he writes, Number one doesn't talk that much and kinds of loves money. She also has aspects where she doesn't have much charisma in drinking scenes, but her visuals are great. Cry emoji. In another conversation, JJY texts the group that he's boarding the plane soon and he says, I will f Korean as soon as I arrive. I'm going to invite them to my house before going out. Germans have huge asses. His idol friends write, Get back safely. Fly safe. An employee of the Burning Sun writes, I bet German see smell like sausages. JJY says, not bad. LOL, we had fun. A lot of netizens noted that it's kind of crazy that they are so polite to each other. Even saying things like, get back safely, have a safe flight, we miss you. Meanwhile, they talk about women, I mean, in the most degrading ways possible. Another super controversial conversation involved the idols talking about who Sung Lee had with yesterday. And they asked, was she delicious? And they said things like, I want her number. And one person wrote, yes, she is comfort woman level. Let me tell you, comfort woman is a very, very sensitive topic for most Koreans. It is aside from the crimes, the most horrifying comment that was found in the group chats. Chinese too, it's, it's yes. a huge problem. Yeah. So to give context, comfort woman was one of the worst atrocities that oh the God. Japanese government committed towards Korean and Chinese women. 
and a lot of the victims so when japan colonized korea along with various other countries in asia so i don't believe that it was just korean and chinese they promised a bunch of women from all these different countries but we're just talking about korean women here that they could work in factories to make just enough to barely survive they're like you can barely get by and you can maybe feed your kid but because these women had no other choice nothing else they were basically forced to agree, not knowing that the Japanese government never intended them to work in factories. They were actually forced into s trafficking. They were locked up and what made to be fuck? assaulted by Japanese soldiers every single day. Comfort women have come forward to say that what they were the essayed at least 30 times a day what? while they were held captive. I could go into further detail, but it's very, very depressing. They were impregnated, they contracted diseases, they were experimented on, tortured. The so the topic hell? of comfort women is highly sensitive, additionally because it's not really something that happened long, long ago to yeah. multiple generations before us. Many of the comfort women, the victims, were elderly women in Korea. I believe the last few are still alive. Many yeah. of them have since passed but they have yet to receive an apology from the Japanese government. And a lot of the tensions in current time between the Korean government and the Japanese government, not to get too political, is this is one of those things. Many Korean citizens want apologies for the comfort women before they pass on. And the Japanese government has refused to acknowledge their crimes. And here what? we have the Korean faces of the entertainment world making fun of comfort women and recreating the tragedy, so to speak. I mean, even if we take out the literal crimes committed in the group chats, even just the way they talk about women, while they have a pre predominantly female audience as idols is despicable. I mean, you can it's, tell what kind of people they are. You can tell what kind of men they are. It is fucking disgusting. Dude, like these, these conversations seem borderline fake. They are so horrendous. Are we talking about like those idols that we just saw before? How can humans even use that word in a sentence? Like, what? Oh. Yo, like, it, I, I, I can't, like, fathom the fact that, that those text conversations are real. They seem so freaking... You never truly know like, anybody. Like, fake. Like, no way actual humans said that. No. But they did. And like, as, as Stephanie's saying... When your main audience, you know, the the it, it, they're, they're females. You should respect them even more so. And then these dudes are just using the worst terms possible as they're talking about. Completely oh my god! Crude, emotionally violent, Women. disgusting comments and jokes. And side note about the messages being released. Some people hate the tech employee for not turning in the text sooner. They state that if it were them, they would have turned it in sooner. And that could be a thousand percent true, especially as a woman. I'm like, yeah, maybe I would have turned <sighs> it in sooner. Few things to note. Police corruption is really bad anywhere, and in Korea it's the same. There were already strong indications in the data that the tech employees saw that high, high, high up police officials were involved in the trafficking ring, if you will. So what would you do? Go to a different officer? What if they all answer to the same person? How do you know that person's immediate boss isn't involved as well? And in Korea, when you mess with the police as a normal person, you might be ending your life right then and there. They could easily get you fired from your job. They could get you outcasted. You could lose everything, your family, your livelihood. You would be on the street and guess what? Burning Sun would probably still be up and running and victimizing people. And in Korea, defamation laws are honestly dumb. Like they're not even defamation laws. So in the US, defamation is when someone knowingly states a lie about another person claiming it to be a fact. So the basis is you are lying about someone else and you're not allowed to do that, which makes sense. In Korea, it's even if you tell the truth about someone and that someone doesn't like what you said because it hurt their feelings or hurt their reputation, they can sue you for defamation. Which wow. a lot of people in Korea even think it's very goofy because that's that is so not absurd. Really the definition of defamation. Mm -hmm. But here we are. Because you're saying the truth. This employee could have been sued to the point of having nothing but the clothes on his back because they're not even dealing with one celebrity or one rich business owner. They're dealing with a whole roster of them, all cozy with politicians and police. What chance does this tech employee stand? Yeah. And even if they went through all of that, the burning sun could still be up and running. So I don't know if I would sit here and say, oh my gosh, well, that person is messed up. 
I do think it is frustrating that they sat on the information for three years while people continue to be victimized. But I think that there's so much cultural societal nuance that goes into a decision like that. And I think that we could technically all sit here and be like, I could never do that. But I don't know. I guess yeah, but we don't I, really it's know. like how powerful are these people? All of these people combined. And who can he go to? Like, yeah. really, you don't know. Honestly, I was thinking through all this. I'm like, is this dude still alive? Because, you know, he did at the end of the day. Yeah. give out all this information yeah. and that, that leads it. me to think in this world that we live in with the corruption and the horrible people in power i'm like is he even still alive today because that's happens it's the reality of the world we live in like it's ooh. just what happens so when so when you know that if you come out right now and then like nothing is going to happen you risk nothing happening so you don't want to pre-play it and then have it go on for years after you come out and then obviously you lose out on all this information you you like on you know this proof you know and fuck it up for anybody in the next 10 years that also goes to the club you want to play the you want to play the cards right cuz at the end of the day that's that's what's actually going to actually fix anything you could go early and then maybe help out some people from going you know for the next year or so but then it, if the reputation goes back to the same club reopens everything goes back to the way it was so you did nothing and people are still and meanwhile you run the risk of hurting yourself yeah and then not helping anybody yeah no job losing everything like yeah. dude that this that, that, that employee's decision was yeah. freaking tough man it seems like the, the per people in charge are in on this and technically he committed a very big crime by keeping <laughs> why, why did it did it go out of sync for you the data oh there it is so he broke the law as well now i will say that when he finally did turn in the evidence after the whistleblower kim so he saw that and he was like i think you know along with all now the other the anonymous women that were coming out he's like i think this is the time that people would actually listen and not think that these are fake he was very smart he hired an attorney who was also very smart and they decided instead of handing it over to the police who were foaming at the mouth for this they handed it over to the civil rights commission office and that is how a lot of it became public wow because the police would have never made this public yeah. mm -hmm. wow which again i don't know maybe he could have done that three years ago maybe it wouldn't have worked all we know is yeah it's out now Many of the involved parties continue to state that. But you got to do the moves like how you think it's best. You can't just prematurely do something like I said. Like yeah. I think I mean it worked out. It did work out sort of. Suddenly only went away for a year and a half. I still don't get that, dude. A lot of these texts are I the still don't get the investigation that. into Burning Sun by the prosecutor's office, which netizens feel like that wouldn't have been the case if there was a question of the validity of them. And the CEO of the Burning Sun even said, if Sung Lee's cacao messages from three years ago are a crime, aren't all Korean men criminals? What the fuck does that mean? Insinuating what? that all what? these jokes about sex work and women and all of that is just how men talk. Wow. It's not what the fuck which is the most absurd thing what? to say ever but it also does kind of confirm the validity of the chat logs yeah but to cover our basis it is alleged for now that these are the real messages between the involved parties but naturally netizens had visceral reactions to the released so alleged has it been messages. proven like they're still alleged wow a lot of fans were devastated that they supported someone like this. There were even chat logs that described how JJY and four of his friends took turns on a victim who was drugged. They joked about how she woke up saying she doesn't even remember anything other than having a drink with them. They also talked about how they thought it was so funny they had gang essayed her while taking pictures. And then the next morning, JJY went to a fan sign. So, I mean, it's crazy that having nerve is to look insane. his predominantly female fans in the eyes while smiling at them when what? he had just done one of the worst things that you could do to a woman the night before. The SMPA, the Seoul Metropolitan Police Academy, officially take over the case early 2019. Media is all over this case. Netizens want to know who's involved, how much they knew, and they wanted all of them to go down. The shares of the Burning Sun were split like this. 42% owned by the hotel. 8% owned by the hotel's chairman. 20% owned by Taiwanese businesswoman Lin Samo. 20% owned by Yuri Holdings, which was allegedly set up by Sung Lee, implying that he has potentially 20% interest in the club. But Yuri Holdings was also technically run by his friend, Yu In Seok. Yu In Seok is also married to a famous actress by the name of Park Hyun Hanbyal. Remember I was telling you about her? Mm -hmm. 
and 10% is owned by a businessman, Yi Moon Ho. He was close friends with Sing Lee, and he is said to have been running the day-to-day operations. He is the CEO of the Burning Sun. So all the foreign investors, they left the country and were safe from backlash, including the Taiwanese businesswoman who owned 20% of the Burning Sun. The rest of the Korean celebrities and business owners were left to be investigated. Burning Sun and Sing Lee were also under investigation for tax evasion, which, you know, really doesn't feel that significant compared to the other allegations. But I think that it does shine light on a lot of the things that he was doing. It was suspected that with all of the business from his VIP clients, with the selling of SA, essentially, allegedly, and a lot of the alcohol packages, he would encourage payment in cash. It's alleged that he was evading taxes. That's good, though. That's how they got Capone. They didn't get him on any criminal charges, Al Capone, or any of like this. I was thinking of that, too, man. It's always the tax tax invasion invasion charges that they're able to get him. They're able to get him in jail and able to open a case. I don't, know. I don't know that that the laws in Korea, but that's how they got Capone right here. So any laundering, you, you remember could, the you restaurant that he had Monkey Museum? That. But they did they it. Called it a restaurant, but it was like a nightclub. He tried to file it under a restaurant so that he could pay less taxes. His ramen business was making a suspicious amount of money. Turns out he was laundering money from Burning Sun through the ramen huh. franchise. It was a whole so lot. A it was a criminal? mess. Like I think it also shows Dude. he was heavily involved. You know, he knew what he was yeah. doing. So while everybody is being investigated, Sing Lee announces his retirement from the entertainment industry. And it's a very off-putting statement. He's basically like, I think it's a good idea to retire at this point. I decided to retire because the issue has caused so much social controversy and I've been criticized and hated by the public for the past month and a half. And now with all the investigative agencies in the country investigating me, I am being labeled as a national traitor. I cannot allow myself to cause harm to everyone around me just to survive. 많은 분들께 실망 끼쳐드렸습니다. 다시 한번 죄송하다 말씀드리고 싶고요. Netizens hated his apology. It felt very, you guys blew this whole thing into something that it's not. So now I'm just going to retire then. I don't want to face your criticism. Also, it had this aura of, I don't know what's going on. I'm just as confused as you are. You know, it's like, what's going on? There were even articles titled, The Burning Sun Scandal Case That Everyone Accepts Hung Lee Knows About. He also stated wow. that this would be a good time for him to enlist in the army and serve his duty as a good Korean citizen. And everyone got riled up for that because in Korea, men have to serve two years, mandatory enlistment. They're like, the army is not a place for you to escape your reality. So even with all of this, the consequences just weren't that great. I mean, okay, maybe that's a strange word to use. It, it wasn't even comparable, I guess would be a better way to phrase it, right? Some of the more notable sentences included JJY, idol, sentenced to five years in prison. Uh, five Choi years. Jong-hyun, five. idol, sentenced to two and a half years in prison. Brother of Girls Generation, Yuri, sentenced to four years in prison. Meanwhile, Seung Lee enlisted in the army and he was able to have a military trial. Wow. And what does that mean? Wow. He had nine charges ranging from work, violence, crimes and then breaking food sanitation laws occupational embezzlement things like that he was found guilty of all nine charges sentenced to three years in prison he would have to file to be a offender and he was fined almost eight hundred fifty five thousand dollars he appealed he was given one and a half years in prison instead the laws are a joke like dude that is just a joke what's the prison time if they smoke weed in korea it's probably a lot more than that, right? I have the fuck? Do they not, like, whoever's, like, doing the, the, the sentence, do they not value the life of a human? Um, or anything? Like, does like a, a, a human not sacred? Probably got a military what? one. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. I have no idea what that means, but it sounds like it was better for him. You get five years to the other dudes? What? That Dude, they did five a years. Whole sex trafficking life. they every single one of them life life and cut off their f- you know you you y'all know what here's a convenient loophole that's gonna piss you off in korea if you go to prison for less than one and a half years you can serve quietly meaning it's not going to be on your record when you get out sing lee was sentenced to exactly one and a half years so technically he missed the cutoff and it would be on his record Somehow, he manages to get out two days early, meaning that it would be expunged from his record. Wow. Oh, and he's spotted clubbing and cheating on women in Bali since then. It's on the record now. Like, yeah. We're not going to forget about that. What a so shitty 
person. Yeah, there are some people that comment what? things like, he's still young, I hope that he can overcome the mistakes of the past and live oh. his life. Isn't the rest of his life too long for him to just crumble like this? He paid the price of his sins through the law already. Let's all give him a chance. Listen, we all fuck up once or twice in our lives. This isn't a fuck that, up. That is not something that you can say that. Like, yo, he deserves... No. A uh, hell no. I will say most of the comments are pretty logical and they read, Every country needs harsher punishments for assault. He mm -hmm. suffers two years in prison. Mm -hmm. His victims suffer a lifetime. Two years isn't enough. Exactly. Anyways, if the system doesn't give them what they deserve, society should. Regardless, I think we can they all should. agree that many of the perpetrators got off with much Agreed. less time than expected. Even corrupt police officers who were exposed of being in on the whole thing, <sighs> they were just either dismissed from their positions and those were just the lower ranking ones. The high ranking officials that were involved, they weren't even dismissed. Nothing happened to them. What? There wasn't even some sort of PR statement of like, we're gonna reorganize the police force and make countermeasures set in place against mm -hmm. bribery and corruption. Nothing, nothing, yeah. Yeah, that and is all BS. the VIP clients, they essentially got away with it for SA. What? And somehow even Kim, remember the whistleblower who broke three ribs and got uh -huh. punched in the face? He yeah. started the Blue House petition. Well, he gets arrested too for <laughs> allegedly really abusing three men and harassing people inside the Burning Sun, which half the people argue Kim is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Oh. He did good on whistleblowing the Burning Sun, but he was probably involved in some weird oh. stuff too. And a lot That's of others me. believe, no, it's just fishy. Like the <laughs> allegations against him are just fishy at this point. Okay. He was sentenced to a year in prison, but he says wow. that he will be appealing the decision. So it seems like minus Kim, everyone else got off with a slap on the wrist with all things considered. Unbelievable. Wow. The fact that the guy's roaming around, yeah. living his best life. A lot of K netizens think that it has to do with Korean society of uh, victim blaming and shaming victims who come out for crimes like this remember the itaewon case that we covered we talked about how some horrible people didn't feel that bad for hundreds of victims who died because they said well why would they go out for a party for halloween anyway yeah. it's mm -hmm. not a good place mm -hmm. for young respectable people a lot of families of victims for itaewon wanted their names not to be made public because they were scared that their loved ones would be victim blamed and it was the similar case with burning sun the victims were scared to come forward because they would have been blamed of then it's always the most away? obvious like in hindsight they're like well why did they go in the first place like if yeah they knew yeah like no that's not what the fuck that's not what who the fuck thinks like that when they're going to this stuff no that's right it's so fucking irritating to hear comments like it's that ignorant. Like, like what is wrong with you well that's just the risk you take as a woman at a club and because there weren't really that many victims you risk you, you know you you risk everything when you step out the front door it doesn't mean you want it to happen to you or that it's okay if it happens to you like stuff still needs to happen so the perpetrators and the predators that do all this shit like it's ridiculous like Look nothing happened forward happens. at the court speaking directly on the case they got off way too easy i think the only th way to come back that is to for society to speak up more about to support in support of victims right yes. like that's the only way for other people to realize you're so dumb by saying that yeah like, like we need to make it yeah you're we have dumb to and gross. keep talking about it to to yeah. lift up the victims yeah yeah and um another thing was it's just really annoying in the justice system that you would think drugging victims to SA that makes the crime that much worse, right? Because now you're doing more things to their body, but it actually helps the perpetrators get away with it in the eyes of the justice system. Because what? you know, what's justice, right? It's a way for perpetrators to say, she's not credible because I her, but that's not the point. And it's just insulting and infuriating at this point. In what? other case-related aftermath news, the hotel on top of Burning Sun oh. was shut down in 2021. The building was sold to Hyundai <sighs> Construction, and they are now going to change it to be an apartment building. The co-founder of YG, Mr. YG himself, stepped down as CEO of YG Entertainment, one of the big three entertainment agencies in South Korea, because of this scandal. It is stated that YG lost close to $100 million worth of investment money because of the Burning Sun case. And recently, Choi, one of the idols, was released from prison as well. And paparazzi found out which church he was attending with his mom. And they stopped him in the church parking lot to ask him for an interview. And in the footage, he literally, you can hear this man whining for his mom. He's like, mom, 
like a kid. When you're seven and a stranger comes to the door to ask if you have time to talk about the Lord and Savior and you're like, Mom, that's what he sounds like. His mom walks up and starts clucking away like some crazy mother hen. She states, he wants to live in faith now. What do you want, paparazzi? Why are you making a big deal out of nothing? Do you want to get punished by God? <laughs> Your son is a piece of shit, and he deserves to be bombarded for every day of his fucking life and have a and have a terrible life. Dude, he doesn't deserve the, the fucking hypocrisy that, that that is being said. Like what? How can you the fact that he's the defending fan. That, that she's defending And again, this is to show you the like, family's the character, fuck? not the yeah. character of people who attend church or are religious. A lot of Christian netizens were commenting, yeah. like, these types of people use religion as a way to shield themselves from their own yeah. evil acts. Other exactly. Were just shocked Very well by said. Family members' behavior. They wrote, Calling your mom like that at that age is legendary, but the mom who pops up and coddles over her son is even mm. more legendary. And I will end you with this note. One chilling fact is, you know how a lot of big K-pop groups have names for their fans? So Blackpink has Blinks, BTS fans are ARMY. Big Bang's fans were called VIPs. They made it Ooh. to say that their fans are very important right people to them. That. But Sun Lee's VIPs Holy crap. were not his fans. They were his best. And I just hope with him being back in the news with these scandals, Burning Sun is never forgotten because yeah. How do you get he away with something like he that? He shouldn't be able to to have anyone foaming over him or yeah, yeah. He or should treating never be able people. Yet yeah, never be able people to do. Come back. He's just a vile criminal. criminal. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on the burning sun? And let me. Uh, know he should be locked up. And please be safe. I'll see you guys on Sunday for the mini so. Well, thank you, first of all, Rob Mango, for all this information, for clarifying a lot of what had happened. For all your research yeah. and time like your placed team, into this to you know, guys, make all the information as real as possible, as truthful God. as possible. Damn, it's just frustrating. Like, you guys saw, I don't know what else to say. Um, Yo, I think out of all the Rotten Mango videos we've seen, I've, I've never been this quiet. Just every piece of information that we got seems so fucking ridiculous. And then the most ridiculous part is how they got away with it. The sentencing was so Are you light. Kidding? Like at least for the other stuff, it was taken even like when when it at like at the end, it was taken more seriously. People had to be had to step down. Presidents were like not impeached, but they had to step down. Stuff changed. The fact that nothing changed here, not even the police that was involved, that, like they, they they they're still there. They remained in they're, their it's positions. Corrupt. All because and it's, it's like even more disgusting. It's because it was women that were the victims. And the law doesn't protect them. Like what the and the law that says that the fact that they were drugged against their will actually helps the freaking monsters. That is insane like to me. That's just... Because like at, that the, at least is, the other ones, we didn't end up as frustrated at the end. The fact that it happened, obviously, those was, was still terrible. But the fact that we still had the... There was repercussions. What's the repercussion with this? Is the law going to change? There is no. I hope it does. There it, it is no repercussion here. Change. I don't know. I, 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 I dude, I, this video has left me with such a sour, sour feeling that, you know, the world kind of just allowed this. Korea allowed this to just and you could go tell on the with the repercussions. of these motherfuckers that, like, they're man children. Like, from the guy beating up that guy, Kim, that like, you could tell he's such, oh. a little, he's such a little bitch boy. And then on top of that, this is a little bitch boy calling for his mom. Like, fuck you. That was no. so fucking frustrating. Okay. Like, you know what you just did. What the fuck are you doing? Hiding behind the, the guy? And then like, the mom, too. Like, oh. being like, stop it. See you guys next time. Uh, thank you again, oh, Cindy B, for, oh. for, for recommending this. Again, I, I do... I. I like knowing what had happened, so thank you again to Rot Mango. Thank you so the much. fact that we know what yeah, happened yeah. Is, 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 is wow. Thank you for watching. And uh, the fact, you know. the name of the, the VIP, like, the fandom name was VIPs, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Thank I didn't, you guys I didn't for even watching. Think, I didn't even think of that, honestly. At the end there, she said it, I was like, damn, that is so true.
Dude, bit. that was like that was the knockout. That was the knockout was punch right there. Taint, tainted. I hope. What? I hope they don't consider. I don't know. Oh. I can't. Thank you guys I... for watching. See you guys next time. Peace. Ciao.